And a very pleasant good afternoon to you from Ari St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore, Texas. Welcome to our broadcast of Kilgore College Football on the KC Sports Network, our video stream today, courtesy of the Kilgore College YouTube channel. And a pleasant good afternoon to you, everyone. My name is Manny Almanza. Glad to be with you for the broadcast today. And joining me, Mike side, it is Bob Brewer. Bob Brewer, a former NFL player. Bob had played nine years in the National Football League, graduated from the University of Minnesota, was drafted by the Houston Oilers, went to Canada for a couple of years to play in the Canadian Football League, where he migrated from wide receiver to tight end, and then with an opportunity for the San Francisco 49ers opened up, well, Bob took advantage of that opportunity. He made the team with the 49ers, and in his rookie year, he caught the first touchdown pass thrown by Joe Montana. After an injury, Bob ended up playing with the Minnesota Vikings for another seven years, and certainly we appreciate him being here. Had some time as well with the Minnesota Vikings broadcast crew. And Bob, thank you so much for being with us on the broadcast today. Manny, it's my pleasure. I really appreciate the opportunity. Like I, like I told you earlier, it's been about 35 years since I've done anything like this, so I hope you and the listeners will be very patient with me. Oh, I think we'll be very happy to have you along with us for the broadcast today. So as we bring you the broadcast, we want to let you know that since it is homecoming day at Kilgore College, those of you who are viewing on our YouTube channel, once the homecoming festivities start for our pregame activities, we will turn it over to our camera operator, John Hester, and give you the natural sound of what is going on with our broadcast here today, our coverage of homecoming on the Kilgore College Sports Network. And then also stay with us at halftime, those of you who are viewing on YouTube, because you'll get all of the halftime festivities on the field this afternoon. But as we set up the game for you today, Kilgore College comes into this contest ranked third in the nation. The Rangers are facing the team from Tyler Junior College that is ranked 11th in the nation. This is the 131st meeting all time between Kilgore and Tyler, and Kilgore owns a 66 to 62 edge as far as wins and losses are concerned, with each team having two ties as well. And on August the 26th to start this season, Kilgore College defeated Tyler 49 to 35 in a non-conference game. And so obviously, Bob, whenever you have the second meeting between teams, whether it's in a division, whether it's in a conference, always a second meeting probably carries a little bit more weight. Absolutely, Manny. It was like playing a, a divisional full uh, when we'd play the Packers or the Bears. The, the second game was always uh, a little bit higher intensity. Uh, everybody kind of knew what you were going to try to do. Um, so, yeah, focus has got to be paramount. Eliminate penalties and just uh, do your job. And as you talk about the divisional foes or conference foes, you're also talking about rivals. And Kilgore and Tyler are rivals. They've been Highway 31 rivals for a long time. Again, this is the 131st meeting between the two teams. Very close as far as wins and losses are concerned. So talk about that whenever you're playing a rival in a big game. That means a lot in the conference standings. Yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't know that that rivalry had gone 131 games. That's That might be more than Packers-Bears or something. It's astounding. Um, so, yeah, I, I can guarantee you the coaches uh, have heightened it up this week. I know the players are looking forward to it. Um, it. It should be a good game. Well, certainly expecting it. Again, number three, Kilgore. Number 11, Tyler, in the latest NJCAA football poll. Kilgore is 5-1 overall, 4-1 in Southwest Junior College Football Conference play. And the Rangers, their only loss coming to Navarro College back on September the 23rd. Tyler Junior College is at 5-2 and two overall and 4-1 and one in the SWJC FC. So we expect it to be a great contest today. 49-35, first game of the season. Both of, both of the offenses showed very well for Kilgore College. Their defense has tightened up and made much better. Likewise for Tyler Junior College. A lot of penalties in the first game. Both of the coaches would tell you that to open the season. And that's one thing you talked about with Coach Gooden prior to the broadcast today was that the Rangers needed to make sure they cut down on those penalties. Absolutely, Manny. It, it's, it's, it's a truism on all levels of football that uh, you've got to minimize your mistakes. Uh, I remember uh, there was always a big board that uh, your goals for the, for the game, and every board said no mental mistakes, no penalties. So... Uh, Coach Gooden said, let's clean that up. Let's play good, tough defense, and we should be able to handle our business. 
Well, and the Rangers hopefully will be able to do that. Of course, Kilgore College has plenty of weapons with Cameron Peters, the quarterback number two, as you'll see him on the video today, and he has a bevy of wide receivers. And you had mentioned as well that Coach Gooden was worried about a young man who wears number five on the Tyler Junior College roster who's a wide receiver as well. Absolutely. He, um, he mentioned that uh, speed kills in football, and he mentioned uh, number five. So I'll, I'll be curious to see this. I did ask if they were going to do anything special you know, put a man over the top, play cover two or whatever you want. And uh, he said, no, we're, we trust our corners to be there for us. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm interested in see that battle. Trey Taylor is the young man that they've been talking about. And I know that he gave the Rangers fits in game number one of the season. We expect a good contest today between Kilgore and Tyler. Other games going on in the Southwest Junior College Football Conference today include the Blinn College Buccaneers at Northeastern Oklahoma. That game is going on right now in Miami, Oklahoma. Cisco will be taking on Navarro and Corsicana. That will be a three o'clock start like our game. And Trinity Valley is at New Mexico Military Institute. That game will be later on today in Roswell, New Mexico. So a lot of big games that mean a lot here in the Southwest Junior College Football Conference. Also, we do want to make note as well, congratulations to Christopher Baldazzo. He's a Kilgore High School product. He's a place kicker and punter for Kilgore College, and he was named the NJCAA Special Teams Player of the Week as Baldazzo was a perfect 4 for 4 on extra points last week and 3 for 3 on field goals. Also, he had three punts for 118 yards in total with a long of 40 yards, and congratulations to Christopher for being the NJCAA Player of the Week. And obviously, you know being in the football business that kickers are maligned a lot of times <laughs> but when you have a performance like that you have been a big part of your team's success absolutely back in my day the kickers would guard the goalposts so the players didn't run into them um, but to, to do double duty like he did kicking and punting um, yeah he deserved the award at this time we're going to turn things over now and let you watch the homecoming festivities for pregame queen nominee Carmoni Bartholomew representing Black Students United. Carmoni is from Austin, Texas, and is, a, is an education major. She is the daughter of Kendrick Bartholomew. Next, we would like to recognize Queen nominee Trinity Edwards, representing Ranger Softball. Trinity is from Tatum, and is a nursing major. She is the daughter of Kathy and Lorenza Edwards. Finally, we would like to recognize Queen nominee em Emma Shenneman, representing the Rangerettes. Emma is from Austin and is a dance major. She is the daughter of Amy and Jeff Shenneman. Now for our homecoming King nominees. First is King nominee Chris Irvin, who represents the Rangerettes. Chris is from Kilgore and is a welding major. He is the son of Jarek and Stacy Irvin. Next, we'd like to recognize King nominee Johnny, Mo Johnny Joe Munoz, representing Sigma Kappa Delta. Johnny's also from Kilgore and is a nursing major. He is the son of Kathy Munoz and Daniel Arcos. And last but not least, we would like to recognize King nominee Vililami Wolfgram, representing football. But Alami is from Fort Worth and is a cybersecurity major. He is the son of Dalman and Sia Wolfgram. Now at this time, we would like to announce this year's King, Kilgore College homecoming king and queen. This year's Co Kilgore College homecoming king is Vilalami Wolfgram. And this year's homecoming queen is Emma Shenneman. <laughs> Crowning this year's homecoming king and queen are last year's homecoming king and queen, Tyree Roberts and Anna Halton.
And so once again, there is the homecoming court and the king and queen as announced by our public address announcer, Mark Freed, as we are in our pregame festivities for homecoming 2023, Kilgore College against Tyler Junior College. Next up, we will have a performance by the Kilgore College Marching Band and something very special that's going to be happening today as well is that we will also hear a performance by the Kilgore College Alumni Band. This is the first time that Derek Legazzo, our band director here at Kilgore College, has put together an alumni band. And the whole goal was to get them to perform with the Ranger Band at homecoming, and they will be having the opportunity to do that in just a moment. You also see the Kilgore College Twirlers heading to the field as well. And this should be a nice time for these former band members and the current band members to have an opportunity to spend some time with those who have been in the Kilgore College band uniform before them as they are about ready to take Good the field afternoon, again under the direction of Derek Welcome to our Lugoso. Kilgore College football game. This is Jacob Lee, announcer for one of Texas's traditionally outstanding marching bands, the Kilgore College Ranger Marching Band with the Kilgore Toilers and Color Guard. Enjoy our pregame show, Traditions and Legends as the band performs the Kilgore College fight song across the field in our alma mater. Also today, we are very excited to present on the field a very special group representing the Kilgore College band heritage with performers here from the classes of 1961 to 2020, including former Kilgore College director of bands, Mr. Jerry Hale. Here's the Kilgore College alumni band. Thank you. 
This next selection is dedicated to the current Kilgore College Ranger Band and Band Program. Featuring various band alumni, here's I Can't Stop Loving You, arranged by band alumnus Mr. Rance Hawthorne. Now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise as the Tyler Junior College Band plays the Tyler Junior College School Song. Please remain standing as the Kilgore College Band plays the Kilgore College School Song.
You may be seated. We will have the national anthem once the teams have entered the field. And for those of you watching on our Kilgore College YouTube channel, we do have some other events that are going to be going on. In just a moment, you will see a few little children able to come on the field from the Boys and Girls Club here Welcome in the Kilgore. The college, the college, the college of and our public address announcer, Mark Feed, of course, will tell you about those youngsters that will be entering the field in just one second. But Bob, I know with your playing years in college and also your playing years in the National Football League, it had to be pretty special for you and other players to have an opportunity to interact with the youth of the community. Absolutely. Um, even more so nowadays, the, the, the players are making uh, considerably more money and they're setting up foundations and doing great things for the community, food banks and big brothers, big sisters and things. I worked a little bit with the big, bro big brothers in Minneapolis when I was playing and, uh, you know, I've got a granddaughter now, Isla, that uh, you can't get that energy from any, any other kind of work or service you do. It's a, it's a great thing to give back. And certainly the Rangers are having their opportunity to do that as we're about ready to wrap up some more of our pregame festivities here. Congressman Nathaniel Moran, United States Congressman Nathaniel Moran is in the house today. Now he attended the Tyler and Kilgore game back at Rose Stadium to begin the season. Sat on one side for the first half, one side for the second <laughs> half. I imagine he will be doing that again, but he's a representative of our total area. And we do thank him for uh, his part in being here and supporting both schools and also promoting junior college athletics in the East Texas area. So it's good to see him on the field today. Here's more from the Kilgore College Band before Nathaniel Moran will come and he will actually be the one who will be tossing the coin. So one of our dignitaries in the area will be performing the coin toss duties today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. Join your voices with the singing of our national anthem, today performed by the KC Chorale, under the direction of Peter Cunningham.
that is the Kilgore College Corral under the direction of Peter Cunningham. He is new to Kilgore College performing the National Anthem. We will be joining our simulcast with KTBB 97.5 FM shortly. So stay with us for that as the play-by-play -play action of Kilgore College football will be coming up momentarily. The Kilgore College marching band is leaving the field and then we'll have our coin toss momentarily. But we'll let you go back to the sights and sounds of what's going on in the field prior to joining the radio broadcast. out on the field, captains for the Rangers, number one, Chris Marshall, number two, Cameron Peters, and number 34, Kiritapu Galei, for Tyler Junior College, number seven, Edric Griffin, number 11, Gabe Adams, and number 70, we do not have his number. Also representing with us today, we are pleased to have U.S. Representative Nathaniel Moran. Hi, uh, gentlemen, welcome to this afternoon's coin toss. Tyler, you are the visitor. We have coin here and tails. I'd like for you to make your choice. Tails, tails has been called. It is heads. Kilgore, you've won the toss. Kilgore has deferred their toss to the second half. Tyler, you need to see which end would you like to kick from. Right. Kick that way. All right, put your back to the goal, Tyler. Kilgore. Tyler will receive south end zone. Gentlemen, shake hands. Good luck. Once again, we want to thank U.S. Representative Nathaniel Moran for today's coin toss. Thank you, sir. And a very pleasant good afternoon to you from Ari St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore, Texas. Manny Almanza with you along with Bob Brewer for our broadcast of Kilgore College Football this afternoon on 97.5 FM KTBB on the KTBB app and also on KTBB.com. Additionally, we'd like to also welcome those of you who are viewing our video stream today on our Kilgore College YouTube channel, the Kilgore College Sports Network. So very happy to have you with us for our broadcast today. And it's a big one in the Southwest Junior College Football Conference as the third ranked team of the nation, the Kilgore College Rangers, battle the number 11 Tyler Junior College Apaches. As I mentioned, joining me Mike side today, very first time to be able to get to hear the golden tones of Mr. Bob Brewer. Now, Bob is a nine-year NFL veteran, having played for the San Francisco 49ers and also for the Minnesota Vikings, and we're happy to have him with us. And we'll talk more about Bob's career during the course of our broadcast today. But, Bob, right now, it is the attention given to Kilgore College and Tyler Junior College football action right here at Ari St. John Memorial Stadium and Kilgore College about to kick it off. And this is some exciting times here, homecoming week at Kilgore College. Obviously, you've been busy with homecoming things here at KC, but as well, just able to witness this game today. Absolutely, Manny. Uh, homecoming always uh, is an extra special time, especially for the players. They, uh, Whether they admit it or not, they want to they wanna shine for everybody in the stands. So, um, And this first kickoff, special teams are you know, a third of the game, so let's hope we get a good return. Carlos Vasquez, a sophomore place kicker from Longview High School, will kick it off, and we are underway from Kilgore. Take it at the 10 to the 20, left side to the 25-yard line, and then racked up hard at the 27-yard line for Tyler Junior College. Gabe Adams, he's a sophomore from Longview as well. He was taken down, and a nice hit applied for the Rangers on special teams to start things off. And it'll be first and 10 for Tyler. They'll start at their own 27-yard line. Boy, great job on special teams by Damian Dunn and company. Also helping out as well on special teams to Darian Boone. 
So Tyler with the football to start things off. The Apaches will have Josh Thomas at quarterback. Number 10 on his jersey. Fades back, first down. Thomas is coming upfield. He'll fire the ball left side. Ball's caught at the 34 and down to the 36-yard line. The reception for Tyler is made by Grant Parrots, and he's able to get the football up to the 36-yard line for a gain of nine. Second down and one for the Apaches. They'll split trips out to the right-hand side. One man in the backfield with the quarterback, and that one man is Logan Johnson, a sophomore from Texarkana. Rangers with four down linemen on second down. The snap, Johnson's going to bounce left side, and he'll have the first down and more up to the 40-yard line, and it'll be taken down by Vincent Page, the sophomore linebacker for Kilgore College. First down for Tyler, end up picking up four on the play to the 40-yard line. Yeah, good first series. The first, that first first down of the opening series is also important. They did a nice job. So trips to the right now, first down for the Tyler Apaches at the 40 yard line, there's the snap. Thomas with the three step drop, looking upfield, fires the ball, caught by Johnson out of the backfield at the 45 yard line, and then he gets wrapped up as he crossed midfield and he is slow to get up as the hit was applied by Jaheim Patterson of Kilgore College. And so that will be a first down, however, for Tyler as the ball has moved into Kilgore territory at the Kilgore 48. That's a 13 yard gain to the 47 rather. Yeah, nice play by that running back. They ran a little wheel route. Right to left, good job by him. Good catch, took the hit. Trips to the right, one to the left, first down, Tyler. Thomas will hand it off, Johnson will try it again and then he'll get wrapped up. Vincent Page got him from behind, but big number 90 for Kilgore College, Kawan Robinson, a sophomore from Bryant, Arkansas, wraps him up up front, no gain, second down and 10. Yeah, that's one of those plays where number 21 was probably hoping they'd give it to somebody else after taking that hit, so uh, good on him to at least try to get back into the line. So second down and 10 for Tyler. Moving right to left from our broadcast position, south to north here at Ari St. John Memorial Stadium on a mostly cloudy afternoon, at least above us here. Pretty warm as well. We'll give you a little bit of the weather in just a moment as Tyler's moving the football. Started the drive at their own 27-yard line. Thomas pump fakes with a shoulder shake. Now he's coming to field. He'll go down on his own accord at the 45-yard line of Kilgore. He'll pick up two to make it a third down and eight. The pocket broke down. He came forward, Bob, and then that's all she wrote. Yeah, he did a good job. It looks like he got off his first read pretty quickly, but uh, did a job, good job of at least getting positive yardage. So now you'll have double wideouts to the right. Make it trips to the right now. Excuse me. One to the left for Tyler. Third down for the Apaches at the Kilgore 44-yard line. The snap goes to Thomas. New back in this time, but Thomas is going to keep it around left end, and he's going to go out of bounds shy of the first down, apparently. The referee marks him out of bounds at the 40. He'll pick up four. That makes it a fourth down and three for the Tyler Apaches. And so at fourth and three, actually, they give him the 39, so fourth down and two now for Tyler with trips to the right and one to the left. Just getting started here in Kilgore. If you're just joining us, and it's going to be offsides against Kilgore. Free play here for Tyler. Thomas is going to go long, and that's going to be incomplete. And this one's coming back anyway. It was intended for Trey Taylor on the coverage for Kilgore. Kobe Jones, a sophomore DB. But, Bob, that one's coming back. Yeah, like we like we talked earlier in pregame, Manny, that uh, the coaching staff said they have to reduce their penalties, especially in those crucial, crucial situations like that. You can't give a, a team a, a free first down. So I don't think we were expecting this for our weather for the uh, last part of October. 82 degrees with a feels like temperature of 88 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. So here's a first down by penalty for Tyler at the Kilgore 34. Pass comes out in the flat right side and Trey Taylor gets wrapped up immediately. What a great job defensively for the Rangers on the defensive left hand side. And coming up and making the stop for KC, it's Davion Moses, a sophomore defensive back from Pearland. Yeah, that was a great play. They tried to set up a wide receiver screen with two other people out there, receivers out there, and he fought through the blocker and uh, made a nice play. No gain. Second down and 10, Tyler at the Kilgore 34. 11.46 is on our first quarter clock. There's no score. It's the first possession of the ball game for the Apaches. And we're glad, we're glad you're with us here on KTBB and the KC Sports Network. The snap goes to Thomas, another shoulder shake, he comes left side, and he pulls it down, he'll get taken down around the 31, maybe the 30, Page is there for Kilgore College, and also as well, it is Wilbur Smallwood, Smallwood was tapping his helmet, I think he probably thought he could have made a play a bit earlier upfield. Yeah, absolutely, the, the rush saved him there, because the number 11 to the right actually had an 
an opening on the, the cover two defense that Kilgore was running, but the, the rush uh, made the quarterback get off him. Uh, so we have one of the Tyler players. Is he slow to get up or is it an equipment? Yeah, it's an equipment issue, so he'll come off the field. So that will be Tyler's Michael Enna, the sophomore offensive lineman. And so now we'll have the Apaches with a third down. They're at the 31. They need seven for the first down. Double wide receivers to each side for Tyler. Kilgore jumps but gets back. No contact was made. So Tyler needs to still run this play with 11 on the play clock. I think the Tyler fans were wanting an offsides, but no contact was made. Thomas looking at the sideline a long time. There's three on the play clock. They're going to have to hurry and snap this now. And Tyler's going to call a timeout. So Coach Tanner Jacobson said, hey, we need to get this thing in Tyler, gear. Tyler. I think what happened, Bob, was Tyler was wanting the offsides call. They weren't going to get it. A little bit of hesitation, and then you have a timeout that they have to take. Absolutely, Manny. I think the quarterback looked to the, to the back judge going, what are you going to do for us? But uh, took too much time, and then the coaching staff was a little late themselves getting the signals in, so cost them a, a valuable timeout. 10.42 remains on the first quarter clock. It is no score between Kilgore and Tyler. So as you're joining us, Kilgore College enters the ball game as a team ranked number three in the nation in the NJCAA football poll. Tyler Junior College is ranked number 11. Kilgore enters the contest with a record of five wins and one loss overall, four and one in conference play. Tyler is five and two overall and four and one in conference play as well. This is the 131st meeting between these two teams, Tyler has a 66, rather Kilgore, has a 66 win edge, 66 to 62 in wins and losses. The teams have tied twice against each other. And here we go, back to action now. Uh, it's a third down and seven for Tyler at the Kilgore 31 yard line. 10.42 on the clock with no score. Thomas out of the gun, takes the snaps, gonna fire this ball deep, has a man wide open and it's gonna be incomplete. Broken up at the very last minute. What a great job defensively for the Rangers to come on over and make the play. Davion Moses, it was intended for that very dangerous Trey Taylor, as you mentioned, also back there for Kilgore as well, Jaheim Patterson. And so it's a fourth and seven. And Bob, that was a close call, safe for the Rangers to come over quickly defensively. Absolutely, man. It was a great play by that safety. They ran a cover two from the folks in the listening. Cover two just means there's two guys responsible for the deep halves of the field, and he closed the, the gap a lot. Field goal attempt for Tyler, ball at the 37. This is a 47-yard wow. field goal attempt, and the kick is easily through the uprights and good by Christian Baxter, who's an excellent place kicker. 10-29 to play in our first quarter. Tyler with the early lead. It's the Apaches three, and the Rangers nothing. We'll take a 60-second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB. <laughs> deep to receive for the Rangers. Number five, Zeke Freeman. And number 81, Melvin Pope. Kicking off for the Apaches, number 28, Christian Baxter. The score is three to nothing. Tyler Junior College with a lead over Kilgore College. 10.29 on the clock as Christian Baxter pumped through a 47 yard field goal off the Apache's first drive of the ball game. Baxter's kick is fielded at the three yard line to the five to oh. the 10, up to the 15, oh. the 20, big hole to the 30, to the 40 right sideline, the midfield, and down from behind at the 45 yard line of Tyler. A terrific return for Kilgore College by Melvin Polk. He's a fresh and wide receiver out of Weatherford. He gets the uh, Rangers in great field position. Nice tackle from behind by Edric Griffin. Otherwise, number 81 for Kilgore, Melvin Polk was gone. Yeah, that was a great play by the up people in the Kilgore return team. They gave him a big lane to the right, and uh, he took advantage of it. 
54-yard kickoff return. They'll officially mark it down at the 43-yard line of the Apaches. So Kilgore takes over with Cameron Peters at quarterback, 10-19 to play in the first quarter. Double whiteouts to the left, one to the right for Kilgore. Man in motion now goes to the left-hand side of the line of scrimmage. Handoff goes to Dominique Williams getting the start again, and Dominique will cross the 40, get down to the 39-yard line. He'll pick up four yards on the play, second down and six. And so with 10.07 to play, Kilgore with the football. Tyler started the drive at its own 27-yard line. It bogged down in Kilgore territory, and Baxter with a 47-yard field goal at 10.29 in the first quarter, and that gives Tyler its three to nothing lead. Second down for Kilgore from the 39-yard line of Tyler, following the 54-yard kickoff return by Polk. It's a fake, Peters one to his right, has all kinds of room, he's gonna take advantage of it, he'll have the first down and more, and he will headbutt a player at the 30-yard line. The Tyler player who made the tackle went low on the play and they collided. Bernyak Aya, a freshman DB from Azel, in there on the stop, but that'll end up being a first down on a nine-yard pickup by the quarterback, Cameron Peters. Yeah, good play by him, but uh, I think I'd recommend him getting down before he takes that kind of hit. 9-19 to play, always scary when the quarterback decides to hit somebody. But I think that's somewhat of the mentality of some of the players that you'll see today. Absolutely, man. Trips to the left now for Kilgore, first down. Williams coming right-hand side, gets submarined at the 28 for a two-yard gain. That was a great tackle by Aya yet again for Tyler Junior College. Maybe one yard to the 29, second down and nine. But Burnock that time came in and is able to submarine Dominique Williams for the short gain. 849 remains in our first quarter. Tyler with a three to nothing lead as the Apaches got a field goal on the opening drive of the ball game by Christian Baxter. So double wideouts to the left and one to the right for Kilgore College. Cameron Peters, the starting quarterback for the Rangers. Dominique Williams in the backfield. He'll take the snap. He will run into a big pile of Apaches and specifically for Tyler Junior College making the stop, Michael Nwachoka. He's a freshman tight end from Lake Highlands, Texas. Yeah, that was, um, I hate to say it, but the, the tight end let the uh, linebacker cross his face and made that tackle in the backfield. That's a, it's a tough block for the tight end if that uh, defensive end is taking a slant like that. 8.07 to play in the first quarter. Kilgore facing a third down and nine from the Tyler 29-yard line as the Rangers got a fantastic kickoff return by Melvin Polk to set them up in good shape. Now the Rangers looking to take advantage of it with double wideouts to each side for Kilgore College. There's a snap to Cameron Peters, fakes it. Here comes the rush. Peters fires the ball, and it's caught for a first down. What a great catch by Michael Phoenix of the Rangers for the first down at the Tyler 17-yard line. He was able to keep the ball in his hands out of the hands of Burnock Aya. That's a 12-yard pickup for the Rangers. Absolutely good play by both sides. The defensive man was right there. The quarterback put it in about the only place he could throw it. Ford did a short little cross right to left and made a good catch. First down for Kilgore with the ball at the 17 of Tyler. Snap goes to Peters, fakes it to Williams. He's gonna go toward the end zone. Touchdown, Kilgore College. Oh, what a beautiful route run by Chris Marshall of Kilgore College to get into the end zone for the score. He froze the defender just a moment on the left-hand side and then stuck behind him for the score. And the Rangers have a 6-3 lead with 7-13 to play in the first quarter. Absolutely, Manny, you just, you just said it perfectly. The under, under route, Took the attention of the corner, and when the wide receiver stuttered, he ran right by him for the for the easy touchdown. Player of the week, Christian Baldazzo on for the point after touchdown for Kilgore. There's a snap, ball is down, kick is on the way, and that one wiggles through the uprights. The kick is good. Nice job by Mason Welch, the holder, to be able to snag that high snap. So the Rangers on the board at 7.13 to play in the first quarter on a 17-yard touchdown pass. Peters to Marshall, Kilgore 7 Tyler three, and we will take this 60 second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB. Seven thirteen to play in the quarter. Scores by Rangers seven, Apaches three.
once again, number 11, Dave Adams. Number 21, Logan Johnson. Back to Ari St. John Memorial Stadium in our Grant and Flannery broadcast booth today. Uh, at 7.13 to play in the first quarter, Kilgore College 7, Tyler Junior College 3. Kilgore College finishing off a 43-yard drive on a 17-yard touchdown pass from Cameron Peters to Chris Marshall and Christopher Valdazzo with a point after touchdown for the Rangers. Kickoff taken at the 11 up to the 25-yard line. And then down at that point, the return man again for Tyler as Gabe Adams got pelted down. One of the Rangers in there, Jamari Seals, also helping out on the stop as well, Tyler Prezak. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, but number 30 has made both tackles on the kickoffs now. Sam Fongfang, it looks like, or something. But uh, he's uh, an aggressive kid. So first down for the Apaches. They'll have it at the 23-yard line. Ends up being a 12-yard kickoff return by Adams. And again, Tyler will start out with trips to the left, one to the right. Josh Thomas has been the quarterback for Tyler, and the Apaches have been on a roll. The snap goes to Thomas on first down, firing the ball left side, and that is incomplete, intended for Taylor again. And that time on the coverage for Kilgore, Davion Moses. You mentioned that Trey Taylor was the man who the Rangers were going to try to target defensively as he, with his speed, Second gave Kilgore fits in game number one. So far, so good for the Rangers on number five. Yeah, they were a little, fe a little fearful of speed, but um, did a little stop route there, about eight, nine yards. Sure caught the ball, actually. Second down and 10 for Tyler. At its own 23-yard line, Thomas fires it right side, make it left side this time, caught up to the 30-yard line, and then down at the 34 for Tyler. It's Makai Rice, a sophomore wide receiver out of Waco, and he will have the first down on an 11-yard gain. Yeah, simple little drag route. Drag route's just the inside receiver, goes up about three, four yards and runs to the sideline. Wide receiver helps him with the block. 6.42 to play with Kilgore leading 7-3 in the first quarter. Thomas is going to go deep left side, has a man wide open, and it's too long for the intended receiver, Grant Parrots. And so the Rangers have to breathe a sigh of relief there on the coverage for Kilgore. It was Jalen Webb, and Webb was beaten that time. Yeah, he really was. And the ball was actually thrown very well. The wide receiver may have stuck his hands out a little too long. It's hard to run fast with your arms in front of you, but um, good try anyways. 6.30 on the clock, second down and 10 for Tyler at its own 34-yard line with Kilgore on top, 7-3. to three. Thomas with a short pass caught at the 38-yard line, and a good reaction by the Rangers. The man who received the football for Tyler is Jaquan McGee, and then there were three Rangers who are around him, Seals, Patterson, and then also we saw Wilbur Smallwood. Yeah, that's just too easy, man. The, the corner is seven, eight yards off. They'll take that all day if he doesn't uh, creep up. Gain of six, third and four for Tyler with 6.04 to play in the first quarter. The Apaches trailing seven to three. And Thomas barks some signals and backs off. And the snap goes behind Thomas. There was a miscommunication there, and it ends up being a recovery for Tyler at the 20-yard line. Now, I don't know if they were going to run one of those trick plays, Bob, where the quarterback looks at a sideline, and then you have the direct snap to the running back. In this case, it would have been Ashton Haynes, a freshman out of Gilmer. But whatever it was, it was bad communication all the way to the 20-yard line, a fourth down and very long. The Apaches would need 24 for the first down. Yeah, that... That was a 50-50 guess or whether it was that or not. The only thing I might think might have been a mistake on the center's part is the, the Tyler sideline was uh, signaling a play to the quarterback, I think. And there is the punt away for Tyler Junior College by Colin Randall. Michael Phoenix, the return man, will let the ball go out of bounds at the 31-yard line. So Kilgore College will have the football with 524 left in the first quarter and a 7-3 lead. You know, that was a third and four that turned into a fourth and 24, a 20-yard loss. Yeah, you, you just can't do that sort of stuff. I, like I said, I think it was a miscommunication, and uh, thank goodness the quarterback could get on the ball. 48-yard punt by Randall of Tyler. Puts the ball at the 32 of Kilgore, and the Rangers take over there for the second time. And we'll see in the backfield for the first time in a while, Caden Meredith, the sophomore out of Longview. He was injured last week as Kilgore defeated Trinity Valley. He sat out the whole game. Uh, he's been the starter most of the year. Now he's back in behind Cameron Peters, a double wide out to the left, one to the right in the pistol formation. Snap goes, first down, handoff, and Meredith is going to be wrapped up very quickly. On the stop for Tyler Junior College, J.J. Okate, a freshman linebacker out of Fort Worth. Second down for the Rangers, just a two-yard gain to the 34. Yeah, there wasn't much there. 
So you'll have double whiteouts this time to the left and one to the right for Kilgore. You have Phoenix on the right, on the left. Marshall, who had the touchdown reception. And then also you see as well Zeke Freeman. And Freeman gave some fits to Tyler Junior College in game one. And that's going to be a keeper. Now it's going to be a shovel pass up ahead to the tight end who gets to the 40-yard line, making the reception. Donovan Johnson, the sophomore out of Plano, ends up getting taken down by a couple of Apaches. One of the guys in there was Javius Lyons, a freshman out of Ulysses. Ball to the 40, makes it a third down and two. That ends up being a six-yard gain. Yeah, that was an interesting play. They did a run-pass option, but the, the pass was to the tight end who just kind of released and was just ahead of the quarterback. So with 4.19 to play, we have a third down for the Rangers, needing two from its own 40-yard line. Kilgore leading seven to three. Snap, handoff, Meredith is not going to make. Yeah, he is. He's able to get a surge, Bob, and get across the 40-yard line for the first down. Boy, that was close. I didn't think he was going to get it, but got some help from his friends and gets the first down at the 42, Okate with a stop. Yeah, absolutely, man. He kept his legs turning and got a little of the uh, tush push action, if you will, and uh, made those extra yards. So it's a first down for Kilgore at the 42 with 3.45 to play in the first quarter. The Rangers on top by a score of 7-3 to three with double wideouts to the right, one to the left for KC. Peters, the quarterback, Meredith's behind him. Fake to Meredith, he's going to air it out wide open to Zeke Freeman at the 30. Freeman to the 20, hasta la vista baby, touchdown Kilgore. Zeke Freeman sneaking behind the defense and getting into the end zone for the score. That ends up being a 58 yard pass from Peters to Freeman. That one looked easy for the Rangers who lead at 13 to three with 325 left in the quarter. Yeah, I couldn't tell if that was a breakdown of the coverage or number three for TJC just made an awful error and stopped his feet and the receiver ran right by him for the, for the Kilgore College touchdown. 58 yard pass and Really, Peters, he just lofted the ball out there. Freeman was so wide open. Baldazuan for the point after touchdown for the Rangers, up by 10, trying to make it 11. There's a snap, the ball is down, the kick is on the way, and that one is through the uprights. The kick is good. 3.25 to play in our first quarter. The new score, Kilgore 14, Tyler 3. Let's take a 60 second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB. Kilgore College would like to thank the cheerleaders from Kilgore High School who are here to cheer on our Rangers today. Thank you, ladies. St. John Memorial Stadium in the Grant and Flannery broadcast booth. 325 remains in our first quarter. The Rangers now with a 14-3 lead, capping off a 68-yard drive following a Tyler punt with a 58-yard touchdown pass from Cameron Peters to Zeke Freeman and Baldazzo with the extra point kick at 325 of the second quarter. So right now, after Tyler drove down for the first field goal of the ball game off the first drive, the Rangers have been able to put their offense together for two successive touchdowns. Absolutely, they've uh, really flipped the momentum from that first series. There's the kickoff and it's gonna be fielded at the 10 on a fair catch and you got a lot of extra pushing and shoving. Hey, it's Kilgore Tyler. I think it was going to happen sooner or later, maybe a little bit sooner than what people would have thought. Fair catch made for Tyler by Jihadi Adams, a freshman DB from Tyler. Yeah, I think maybe the TJC coaches said, we can't, we can't uh, block that guy, so just uh, take a fair catch. That's exactly what they did, and they'll get good field position for it at the 25-yard line. So 324 is on the first quarter clock, and the Rangers already out to a 14-3 advantage. Number three, Kilgore. Number 11, Tyler. Again, Rangers have 66 wins in this series, and it's close. Just four wins separate the two teams, meeting 131. 
Trips to the right, first down. Thomas under a rush, loses the ball. Picked up by the Rangers at the 21 yard line. Kilgore with the fumble recovery. What a job coming around and making the sack. August Salvati, the sophomore defensive lineman out of Clearwater, Florida, recovered by Kawan Robinson. Yeah, that was a great job. He did a good swim move on the left tackle, got the sack and caused the fumble and uh, Kilgore was very quick to get on it. So Kawan Robinson, I think he wanted to try to pick it up to have a chance at a score, and he very well could have, but thought better of it, fell on the football just to keep the possession for the Rangers. Yeah, coaching staff will tell the big guys to uh, just fall on it, please. Don't be a hero. 3.18 to play, and the Rangers now have the football at the 22 of Tyler. So here we go again. Kilgore with double wide out to the left and one to the right. Peters is the quarterback. The Tyler Junior College band getting into it as well as the Apache Bells and cheerleaders. First down, Caden Meredith following his big bodies and it dissipates pretty quickly. In fact, the helmet is on the turf now as Meredith goes down at the 22, so he gains nothing. Second down and 10, Kilgore's tight end. Donovan Johnson lost his hat on the play, helping out on the stuff for Tyler Cam Curry. Yeah, there's just nothing there. Um, defensive line for TJC did a good job of stacking up the guards and tackles. So 3.09 to play in the first quarter. Kilgore leading 14 to three, second down and 10 from the Tyler 22 yard line. So Cameron Peters looking over at the bench momentarily. Meredith is behind him. Trips to the left this time for Kilgore College. Snap goes to Peters, handoff goes to Caden, trying to bounce outside. He's able to slip a tackle and get down to the 16 yard line for a pickup of six. Third down and four, taken down from behind by J.J. Okate. Nice job by the Rangers, especially a good lead block by Kilgore's William Boone. Yeah, and the tight end that just came in to replace the tight end who lost his helmet, Joel Jamison, did a really nice job of uh, hooking his guy and then go, trying to get up to the second level. 2.24 on the clock in the first quarter. Kilgore College with a 14 to three advantage. Double wideouts make a trip to the left again for the Rangers. Kilgore needing four for the first down. Pass comes left side, and that was too short. Michael Phoenix made the lunging catch. No gain, fourth down and four from the 16-yard line. At that time, that pass was too far behind Phoenix. He had to go back and get it. Otherwise, if it was on target, he would have at least had the first down. Yeah, I agree, man. If he could have kept his feet, ball on target, he would have turned up for the first down. So it will be Valdazzo on for a field goal attempt. Mason Wilkes will spot the ball at the 23. This is a 33-yard attempt for Christopher as the Rangers hold a 14-3 lead. Time winding down in the first quarter at a minute 38 to play. Ball is down. Kick is on the way by Baldazzo, and it is blocked. Tyler blocks the field goal. It ends up with a football. And so the Apaches get it after they block Baldazzo's field goal attempt. Nice job by the Apaches, and it will be... Kilgore's football did not catch the number of the Apache who ended up blocking it, but the Apaches nonetheless get the recovery of the block kick at the 18 yard line. Yeah, it was hard to tell Manny, but the pressure came from straight up the middle, so somebody got their hands up. And so Kilgore College will have to go back out on defense now with a 14 to three advantage. So Kilgore was able to go ahead and get the turnover in Tyler territory, but ended up doing nothing with it. And that's good news for the Tyler fans. And now Tyler lines up trips to the left, first down and 10 from the 18 yard line. So Thomas is the quarterback and going to his left is his tail back and this will be a handoff on first down. Big hole, right side and getting out of bounds at the 34 yard line for Tyler, it's Ashton Haynes. He had a huge hole on the right side and is able to get the first down before going out of bounds. Referee spots him out of bounds at the 32. That's a gain of 14. Yeah, that was a, a fortunate thing for the TJC team that Rangers were in a stunt to the right and they ran ran right, right away from the stunt. Trips to the left, first down Tyler at the 32 yard line. This is gonna be the keeper by Thomas bouncing right side again, has a little bit of room and the first down or close to it with a minute four to play. So the Apaches after the block field goal, nine yard carry, are they gonna give him the 10? Actually, it's just a nine yard gain to the 41, second down and one for Tyler Junior College. The chain crew got a little antsy, Bob, started moving up the <laughs> field pretty quickly. Yeah, I think they assumed he had got the 10 yards, but he'd stepped out about a yard short. Nine yard pickup by Thomas with 48 seconds to go 
Apache's trying to show some resiliency here. The snap goes, and the handoff. This is Haynes, left side, is able to get a good block, but the Rangers stretched it out and knocked him down for a gain to the 46. That will be a pickup of five, but that will be the first down for Tyler Junior College. On the stop, Jamari Seals, and also in there for Kilgore, Jalen Webb. Yeah, that was a case of the Haynes number 20 for TJC wanting to get to the sidelines. He had a couple of opportunities to go up the field and probably gain a bit more positive yardage. 17 seconds to play in the first quarter. Kilgore leading 14 to three. Tyler first down at its own 44 yard line. Thomas is rolling to his right, fires the ball quick and it's dropped. Incomplete. That was Gabe Adams who couldn't hang on to the ball. Davion Moses was coming on strong for Kilgore. Adams drops it, second down and 10. Yeah, they had a couple guys over. The guy in the flat just off to the right and then the, the guy running the dig route which is just simply a receiver goes down 10, 15 yards and cuts back into the middle of the field. He was open as well. 7.5 to play in the first quarter. Rangers 14, Apaches three, second and 10 Tyler at its own 44 yard line with trips to the right hand side. Snap goes to Thomas. He will stutter step and then come right side trying to get away from the defenders and the Rangers are there to track him down. But Thomas with some great leg power gets across the midfield stripe as he drugged Jamari Seals for a few yards before going down. They'll mark him down at the 49 yard line. And so that will end up being a pickup of five. You'll have a third down and five for Tyler as the first quarter comes to an end. We have finished one from Ari St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore. It's Kilgore 14, Tyler Junior College three. Let's take a 60 second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB. Getting ready for the start of the second quarter from Mari St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore. Tyler Junior College trailing Kilgore College 14 to three. Manny Almanza with Bob Brewer on KTBB. Double white house to each side for Tyler. Third and front for the Kilgore 49, switching sides in the second quarter. Thomas hemmed in, now rolling to his left. The Rangers still pursuing. Thomas shakes off a defender, Davion Moses, but has to go out of bounds as the Rangers did a great job of stringing it out. In fact, Thomas ends up losing yardage to the 49 of Kilgore, losing two, making it a fourth down and seven with 14.43 starting the second quarter. Yeah, it's hard to tell whether he meant to do that or not, but he took a, a high snap, and I think it took him off his rhythm, and he just decided to run to the left. So we have a Tyler punt back at the 47-yard line. So they dropped it a yard further back. So making it a fourth down and nine with 14.23 to go. And Colin Randall is on for his second punt of the ball game at a 48 yard of the first time. This kick will be for field position and it will bounce. It will become unreturnable. And Michael Phoenix decides I'm gonna at least want to touch the football and he does at the 10 yard line. You heard Bob Grimace on that. Rangers have it at the 10. I don't think it was gonna roll any further, Bob. Michael fell on it probably thinking that and so it will be Kilgore's ball at the 10. Yeah, that's one of those plays where the coach is screaming, no, 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 get away. And then when he falls on it and doesn't fumble it, he goes, all right, good play, good play. But it's scary. So here we go with 14.09 to play and the Kilgore Rangers will take the field 90 yards away with a 14 to three lead. So after the block field goal, Tyler had a little bit of offensive momentum, moving the ball up the field for a while. And then the drive just bogs down. The Rangers, I think, did a better job of reacting going sideline to sideline defensively. So double wide to the right, one to the left, first down for Kilgore, moving right to left in the second quarter. Trey Epps, a Kilgore High School product, will take the handoff to the 14-yard line for a gain of four. He ended up being taken to the ground 
by Tyler's Will Hatter. He's a sophomore defensive lineman out of Houston. Yeah, not a bad play. They pulled the left guard, I mean the right guard and right tackle, ran to the left and the back just followed him up. They did a nice job. Good first, first down play. So second down and six, Kilgore with the lead. Just starting the second quarter. Also want to thank John Hester, who's our camera operator for our broadcast on the Kilgore College YouTube channel. Thanks to Chris Craddock for running the scoreboard for our broadcast as well, and to Reagan Sylvie for his technical help during the week. So second down for Kilgore at the 14-yard line. And this is going to be Peters going right side to the speedy Zig Freeman, who gets a little bit of a block and then gets taken down. And then gets taken down out of bounds at the end of the play. No Tyler flags coming down five. here Zig on Freeman the stop for Tyler Burnock Aya. And so now you have a third down for the Rangers. The ball comes up to the 17, so that ends up being a three-yard pickup. Kilgore with a third and three. Yeah, just another play where the, if that defensive back is going to give Kilgore College so much cushion, you just absolutely have to take it. So good job by the quarterback picking the right guy. And you have a guy like Zeke Freeman out there. Had he been able to get a little bit better of a block, he might have been further afield. Absolutely. One, one missed tackle, and he's up the sideline. So Peters will have Epps in the backfield with him. The Rangers will put double wide receivers to each side. The one that has come in extra is Alden Bradley for Kilgore. And this is going to be a snap to Peters. He's going to float this ball out, and that's going to be incomplete. So Freeman got held up by Tyler's defensive back, Kayvon Evans. No flag called there, and so the Rangers will have to kick it away. Yeah, that looked like one of those plays where you're coached if you've got a free release, take off and run the go, but if you get trouble, slow down, and I think the quarterback and the receiver are on different pages. And so the Rangers will have to kick it away with 12.32 to play. Kilgore with an 11-point lead at 14-3. to A little bit of a cooler breeze that is blowing into the press box. Again, 82 degrees at kickoff. Not your typical last Saturday of October weather that you're thinking during football season, but that is just the way it is. So there's the snap. It goes over the head of Baldazzo. It's a safety. The Rangers very rarely, very rarely have bad snaps, Bob. And that one just sailed over the head of Baldazzo and out of the end zone for a safety. It's 14 to 5 now. Kilgore leading Tyler. Yeah, I know you just can't afford that. I don't want to talk old school all the time, but I was a long snapper for a while. And my first long snap was just like that, maybe the four or five yard line. And I shot it back a little high myself. Thank goodness we had a great athletic punter. And he went up and got it and saved me. But um, it's scary when you're down there. You worry about the, the option is you're going to skip it to him and he's going to get tackled for a safety. Or you launch it over his head. So, Well, we had this in a high school game last night. And we have it again today where you have somewhat of a baseball score. Rangers 14, Apaches 5, 12-29 to play in the second quarter, and it will be a free kick for Kilgore coming up. Tyler Junior College will end up with the football, and I'm sure the special teams are getting a bit of a lecture here for the uh, Kilgore College Rangers. So good to have you with us for the broadcast on the Kilgore College YouTube channel and, of course, on KTBB 97.5 FM, also on KTBB.com and on the KT. BBF. Those of you following college football, Kansas just gave Oklahoma their first loss of the season. Kansas 38 and Oklahoma 33. You cannot take anything for granted at any level of football, and Kansas loses to Oklahoma. Uh, rather, Oklahoma loses to Kansas. That game was played in Kansas. 38-33, to Jayhawks with the win over Oklahoma. Also, if you're a Texas fan, Texas leading BYU 14-0 in the second quarter of play. Yeah, it's hard to wrap your head around Kansas as a football power, but uh, with this portal now, everybody can get good players. So I guess it's a, like you said, it's a new, new day in college football. And thanks to Tracy Almanza for updating us with those statistics, or rather those scores. There's the kick away by Vasquez. They field it at the 20 yard line, up to the 30 yard line. Logan Johnson will try to cut back, then gets taken down at the 34, so 14 yard pickup by Logan Johnson on the punt return. Stopped by Kilgore's Isiel Jones, who's had a few tackles on special teams today yeah. for the Kilgore Rangers. Oh, I'm sorry, Manny, but I wanted to apologize. I misspoke. I looked at the number 30 on the wrong roster, so. That number 30 for Kilgore College, Azeel Jones, has made three great special teams plays. He needs, uh, he needs to be special teams player of the week in the conference. 12-22 to play in the second quarter. The Apaches with the football after the Kilgore free kick by Vasquez at the 34-yard line. Tyler takes over, moving left to right. That is north to south here at Ari St. John. Wind kicks up just a little bit more now. 
There was a prospect of thunderstorms this afternoon. We're hoping that's not the case as Logan Johnson will go nowhere. He felt like he was hit by a thunderstorm as Joseph Alzine, a freshman defensive lineman out of Houston, 6'2", 290 pounds, ends up making the tackle for loss. It goes back to the 30, make it the 27-yard line. That will end up being a loss of seven, second down and 17. Yeah, that's no fun for the running back to have to dodge a player basically when he's getting the handoff. There's not a lot of chance for success. So it's double wideouts to each side, and they're stacked for Tyler Junior College. There's a snap. Left side, Thomas throws it, and the play is almost blown up. Davion Moses makes the hit on the Tyler receiver, Makai Rice. Moses was streaking either for the football or for the player. He was going to get one or the other, and he was able to get Makai Rice down for another loss. This one to the 24-yard line. That's a loss of three, and it's a third and 20 for the Apaches. Yeah, that DB was closing on the player so fast. I think if he might have taken a look at the quarterback, he may have been able to intercept that ball. So the Apaches now. Third down and 20 yards to go for the first down. Snap goes to Thomas, looking to his left. Here comes Salvati on the rush. Thomas is going to just fire this one out of bounds because the Rangers were going to be all over him. And wow, the Ranger defensive line has started to add some pressure to Mr. Thomas. And it's a three and out for Tyler with 11 and two to play. Kilgore leading 14 to five. Manny, you don't meet, need me in this booth. I was literally going to say the defensive line is starting to take control of this game and dominating the the. the Kilgore College, I mean the Tyler J.C. offensive line. You know, that has to be effect as well on what Thomas can do running the football because Bob, as you saw earlier on, he was able to run effectively. There's the kick away by Randall, fielded at the 35-yard line by Phoenix. He's going to turn the corner to the 40. He's going to run out of room at the 48-yard line. And so it's going to be a penalty here against Kilgore. Tyler Prazak with a late block on Tyler Junior College's Matthew Cooks, and the Rangers will lose yardage on this one. The one thing you don't want to do is have a penalty like that at the end of a play. There was no need for that block. Absolutely, and especially in today's football. You know, 20, 30 years ago, that you would have been patted on the helmet for a great job, but you just can't do that now to a defenseless player. 41-yard kick by Randall, and the personal foul against Kilgore, and that will move the football back. So with 10.52 to play, Kilgore has the football, but further back, but it had it at the 47. Now they'll start at the 32-yard line. So those are mistakes that the Rangers were talking about cutting out. And I know they didn't have a lot of those type of penalties against Trinity Valley last week. And again, that's always heated against the Cardinals. You wonder if that's going to happen but uh, their penalties were of the holding or maybe the uh, legal procedure type of penalties. But that one, uh, you just hope that the Rangers get that corrected. They don't need to do anything else like that today. Absolutely not. The, the coaching staff won't put up with that. That wasn't a physical error. That was a mental error. So first down for Kilgore College. Rangers with the football at the 32 to start this drive, leading 14 to three. Peters will hand it off to Caden Meredith. He's gonna pick his way forward for a little bit before being taken down at the 34. So he'll gain two. Second down and 12, again helping out on the stop, Michael Nwokocha and company for Tyler. Yeah, he had a little bit of a crease, but not very much. Tyler, if you're listening today, wearing the road white jerseys, black numerals, the black plants with the gold trim, and the black helmets with gold on it as well. Kilgore in the home blue jerseys, white numerals, gray pants, and the silver helmets with the blue star on each side. This is gonna be Cade Meredith on a very late handoff, and he'll only gain a yard to the 35 yard line before the Apaches drive him back. And now we have some extra flags available, extra pushing and shoving. I do think one of the Tyler players actually got shoved by his own player from behind. And we'll see what the referees are gonna call here, whether it will be against one team or offsetting. And then there's another flag that flies late. Yeah, as a player, you just have to hold your composure. Um, <coughs> These rivalry games, I know it's hard, but you just you just got to be more disciplined. You can't you can't do that sort of stuff. 10:06 to play. The Rangers leading 14 to five over Tyler. Tyler with a field goal in the first quarter, a safety in the second quarter. Kilgore two first quarter touchdown passes from Peters, one to Marshall, one to Freeman. Here's the call from the official coming up. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on both teams. Number 51 of the offense, number seven of the defense. No fouls will cancel. But that is each player's first unsportsmanlike uh, conduct foul. A second will result in ejection. 
And so there you have it, Bob, unsportsmanlike conduct against both teams. And we thought it would be offsetting penalties, and indeed it was. And so it will be a third down for Kilgore. The ball at the 35-yard line, so the Rangers with a third down and seven. Yeah, number 51 for the Rangers, Austin Yeager. He, he's been having a good game, I've noticed. He's an aggressive kid, good, tough left guard. But uh, like I said, you just have to hold your composure. Ten minutes to play in the second quarter. Kilgore leading by nine points. Snap goes to Peters, third down. Peters is going to take it up the middle. Now he's going to the side. He'll be taken down. You know that lane closed off pretty quickly for the Rangers. Great reaction defensively by Eldrick Griffin, a sophomore from Pensacola, Florida. I thought Peters would have had enough room for the first down. Then Griffin comes out of nowhere and makes the play. Yeah, exactly, man. The defensive backs read that pretty quickly. They were in a zone, so they had their heads looking at the quarterback, and as soon as they saw him break the line of scrimmage, they closed fast. So no gain by Peters, and the Rangers with a fourth down still have the offense out there with 9.22 to play in the first quarter. The Rangers need seven for the first down. So are they going to try to draw Tyler offsides, which would not result in a penalty that would be long enough for that. This is a big gamble for Kilgore. With 9.09 .09 to play, there's three seconds on the play clock. They snap it, and it's a quick kick by Cameron Peters of Kilgore College. And that will bounce at the 30, at the 25, at the 20, and it goes out of bounds at the 21-yard line as it curled back. And so Tyler Junior College will have the ball at the 21. So Cameron Peters ends up with a quick kick for the Rangers, and Tyler's at its own 21. Yeah, interesting play there. I wonder if that was a result of the snap over the head the last time that they thought, let's, we're in a position, let's, let's just do a quick kick and get that uh, snap it down. You know, for all said and done, that was a 44-yard punt by yeah. Cameron Peters, and, of course, the roll helps out with that as well. But field position is what you're playing for there. Absolutely. Put them back. Let the defensive line dominate like they have been. See what happens. 8.56 to play, Kilgore College leading 14-5. First down, Tyler. Josh Thomas back in at quarterback for the Apaches. Trips to the left for Tyler. First down, it's going to be a handoff to Logan Johnson. Another Apache losing a helmet. Kilgore's had a few players like that as well lose a helmet, and the stop for Kilgore is made by Derek Burns, the sophomore out of Dallas. That's his first tackle of the ball game. Logan picks up three to the 24, second down and seven. Yeah, there's been an inordinate amount of helmets coming off. I don't know if it's the result of Somebody ripping it off. These guys just aren't putting their chin straps on tight enough. Trips to the left this time for Tyler with 8.35 to play. Thomas will hand it off. No, he's going to fake it to Logan Johnson, and Thomas goes down. The Rangers reacting quickly, and Derek Burns, after not having a tackle, has two now as he's able to take Thomas down for the loss. They'll mark it at the 19, and that will be a third down now for Tyler Junior College. The Apaches will end up needing a total of 12 for the first down. Yeah, that was just a simple run pass option, and by the time he pulled the ball back, both defensive ends were on him. There was no chance to pass. Loss of five on the play, double wideouts to the left and also to the right as well. As Thomas awaits the snap, Logan Johnson stands to the right of Thomas. There's the snap. Here comes the Kilgore rush, and Thomas gets hit twice as he goes down. So making the tackle at the ankles for Kilgore College, it was Xavier Tibbs, but Thomas took a couple of blows before that, and Tyler, with another three and out, will be kicking it away with 7.38 to go. Yeah, this, this is more of the same, Manny. Defensive line just dominating. It's going to be a long day for the quarterback if uh, they don't get this turned around. That was a loss of seven to the 12-yard line, and so Tyler will be kicking it away. Fourth and 19, and Colin Randall on to do the chores again for the Apaches. Takes the snap and lofts this one away. Cut it off the side of his foot, so this one's going to be a very short kick. It bounces back. Coach Browning on the sideline telling the Rangers to stay away from it, and it will be Kilgore's football in Tyler territory. The referee will mark it out at the 31-yard line. There's a penalty flag on the far side of the field. Otherwise, you're looking at a 12-yard punt, making a 19-yard kick. Now we'll see what the discussion will be with the penalty flags here. Did they just pick it up, or are they going to make a call? Was it off? I can't be offsides against Kilgore. If it did, they'd move it five yards further upfield. But they put the punting team back on for Tyler Junior College. But there's no movement as to where the placement of the ball will be. Offside. Yep. 
number five at the defense. So Tyler it's offsides against Tyler against Kilgore. So that moves it to the 17, another fourth down. This time the Apaches need 14 for the first down. They still have to kick it away. Yeah, he lined up in the neutral zone. He just he just got to be to be aware of where that ball is. A little bit long to get that call as Randall kicks it away. It's a little bit better. It will take a Kilgore bounce, however, and be downed at the 46-yard line. And that's where the Rangers will take over with 7-1 to play in the second quarter. Kilgore College 14 and Tyler Junior College 5. Yeah, that, that was two pretty bad punts in a row by the punter. He needs to work on his drop, I think. 29-yard kick that time. And so the Rangers will have it at the 46-yard line. From the Grant and Flannery broadcast booth at Ari St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore, Manny Almanza with Bob Brewer, our engineer back at our KTBB studios is Ethan Lodato, and our camera, camera operator for the Kilgore College Sports Network on YouTube today is John Hester. The Rangers with a 14-5 advantage, double wideouts to the left and one to the right for Kilgore College. And Cameron Peters at quarterback for the Rangers. Dominique Wilkins returns as the running back, Dominique Williams, rather. And Dominique will go backwards. Tyler with some great job, with a great Dominique job defensively. Emmanuel Oguns, a freshman defensive lineman out of Houston, making the stop. And that'll go back to the 48, loss of two, second and 12. Yeah, he did a very good job of just slapping the left guard and jumping around when making the play in the backfield. 6.34 on the clock, Kilgore College with a nine-point advantage. The pace of this game has slowed down a lot, Bob, after the first quarter when Kilgore racked up 14 points. Things have sort of just drug on here in the second. Yeah, I think, I think uh, for Kilgore's part, they're trying to take it over with the offensive line. It's going to be a sweep by Williams, and Dominique is going to cut up and leap over the 45 to the 44. So he will gain four yards to make it a third down and eight now for the Rangers. On the stop for Tyler Junior College, Lamarian Hatcher is a 290 pounder from Killeen. Yeah, that was a good play. But just looked like he was going to break it for a little bit more, but just got tripped up. So 5.52 to go now. Kilgore with the lead and with the football, and the Rangers seem to be taking their time here. 16 on the play clock. No rush for Kilgore at this moment. Double wideouts to the left, two to the right now for Kilgore as the tight end splits out wide to the right-hand side. Peters has good protection, has a man for a first down, and he breaks the tackle. That's Marshall at the 30, Marshall to the 25, and the 20, down inside the 20 at the 19. Chris Marshall comes up with another big catch for the Rangers and has a first down inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. Yeah, that was a great play. He did a nice job of getting into the soft spot of the zone. He just kind of stood there, showed himself to the quarterback, and the quarterback made a nice toss. 25-yard pass play. Peters to Marshall with 5.07 to go. So the Rangers keep the drive alive. And you'll have double wideouts to the left, one to the right for the Rangers. As Kilgore now settles back into another series of downs. 14 to 5 advantage. Awaiting the snap is Peters. He'll take the snap. And he will hand it off to Williams. And it is the sacrificial lamb play of the ball game as Tyler's Zion Fonua, sophomore linebacker out of Euless, Texas, racks up Dominique Williams for the loss. Wow. Yeah, yeah he came in, in untouched, Manny, and just blew that running back up. Only a loss of three to the 22. Forward progress was very much stopped there. So now a second down for Kilgore. That's second down and 13. Timeout. And I think we just noticed the lineman's Official change timeout. for the Kilgore Rangerettes. I think they had enough of uh, what was going on, let's get another player in there and try something different. So timeout on the field. In fact, coming in for Kilgore College as the change was made is Jadarlin Key. He is out of Longview, Texas, and we'll have a timeout. Let's take one as well. This will be a short break, a 30-second timeout, a 30-second timeout with 4.35 to play in the second quarter. Rangers 14, Apaches 5, 30-second break right here on 97.5 FM KTBB.
435 to play in our second quarter. Kilgore College leading Tyler Junior College by a score of 14 to 5. And the Rangers with the football. Second down and 13 from the Tyler 22 yard line. So Peters out of the pistol with Williams behind him. Takes a snap. Peters will fire it left side. Marshall wide open for the touchdown. Kilgore College. Chris Marshall was able to catch the ball at the two and back into the end zone for the score. And the Rangers lead at 20 to five with 4.14 to play in the second quarter. Yeah, that was a great read both by the quarterback and the wide receiver. The uh, quarterback read that coverage and the receiver got into the soft spot and it was just pitch and catch. There was a penalty flag go down. So we won't count the touchdown just yet. Now the referee is pointing back toward Kilgore's way. And so we'll see if the touchdown stands or not. The ball is back at where the line of scrimmage was near the 22 yard line. So let's see what the official says After here. The play, unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting number two of the offense. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. The Rangers touchdown stands. It happened after the play and they'll enforce the penalty on the kickoff. And that went against Kilgore College's Cameron Peters, the quarterback. That's very unlike Cameron. So I don't know if there was some jawing or pushing or whatever caused him to do that. He's not like that. But in this case, the emotions get the best of him and Baldazzo will come on for the point after touchdown. Ready for the snap, here it is, ball is down, kick is on the way, and that one is through the uprights. The kick is good. Timeout on the field, 4.14 to play in the second quarter. Kilgore College 21, Tyler Junior College 5. We will take this 60 second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB. <laughs> And back to our Grant and Flannery broadcast booth, 4.14 to play in the second quarter. Kilgore College now leading Tyler 21 to five. The last Ranger drive was a 46 yard drive after a short Tyler punt. Ended up with a 22 yard touchdown pass. Cameron Peters to Chris Marshall. Marshall's second touchdown reception of the ball game. Peters third touchdown pass of the ball game. And Baldazzo with the extra point kick at 4.14 of the second quarter. And after the penalty against Kilgore, Peters with the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. It will be a kickoff from the 20 yard line for the Rangers and Vasquez does a nice job of sending it down the field received at the 17 up to the 30 left sideline to the 40 a flight comes down as the return man for Tyler Jihadi Adams is taken down at that point and a flight comes flying in before the end of the play with 407 to go. And number 30. Yeah, another penalty. I don't There's too many of those on the special teams now. Somebody's got to eliminate that. So not sure if it's against Tyler or Kilgore. I'm thinking it's against Tyler here where the flag was thrown in and Vincent Page is clapping about it. So it's gotta be against the Apaches. During the return, he looked back in the number 34 of the return team. 10 yard penalty, first And so you heard it. It's an illegal block in the back against Tyler. And so that will move the football back to the 30 yard line and so Tyler will take over from that point with 407 to go. So again, a penalty hurting Tyler, hurting them with some field position this time. So Tyler starting at the 30 now down 21 to five. Again, Cameron Peters three touchdown passes in this first half having a nice outing for Kilgore. And Chris Marshall, that's twice we've seen him, Bob, run some excellent routes. Yeah, they're taking advantage of that cover two defense. Like I said, it's just two DBs split in the field and the, court, the safeties aren't quick enough getting over there and the wide receiver's doing a good job. 
So double wide us to each side for Tyler. They are stacked. Referees are having another discussion at the 25 yard line. So play is halted just for a moment here. 407 to go. Again, when we get to our halftime show, those of you who are viewing on our KC YouTube channel, you'll have the opportunity to watch all of the halftime festivities, the Tyler Junior College Band, the Kilgore College Band, Apache Bells, Rangerettes, all of that will be coming up for foul you. Was personal foul. Contact with a defenseless player. That results in additional five yards added to the penalty. First down, Tyler. So that's what it was. They cleared it up. Instead of it being just a 10-yard penalty, it was contact to a defenseless player. So they had five yards to the penalty. So they will start at the 25-yard line. The Apaches will with 4.07 to go. And that clears that up. First down, Thomas will take the ball upfield. He ended up running into his own offensive lineman. And that stopped the play right there. Big number 73 for Tyler, Tony Lynn. I don't think he got in the way. I just think that Thomas ran into him. And he ends up going down at the 28, making the 28. So it's a second down and seven from that point. So Thomas will take the snap again. Fires the ball left side, and that is too short. Trey Taylor try to kick it up and maybe catch it after popping it up with his foot. Third down for Tyler. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. You pop that up with your foot and the DB picks it and goes for a touchdown. You might be uh, running some extra laps tomorrow morning. So at 3.39 to play, Tyler with a third down and seven from its own 28-yard line. Again, double wide receiver stacked on each side. Thomas looking over to the sideline. And now they're resetting. Kilgore with his four down linemen. Those guys are raring to go. Thomas with a five step drop. Here comes the rush, rolls it to the left. It's caught by Trey Taylor, and he is wrapped up immediately. Nice job by Jaheen Patterson to stop Taylor short of the first down at the 34 yard line. He was able to gain six, but not seven. And does Tyler punt it or go for it? They will go ahead and put the punting unit on here. So what a great tackle by Jaheen Patterson to stop the first down. Yeah, that really was. If he hadn't made that tackle, that he would have broke up field, absolutely got the first down and probably much more yardage. So good job by him. Does it seem to you, and, and maybe it's just me right now, that Tyler now seems a little bit out of sorts offensively? No, absolutely, Manny. I think they tried to establish the dominance with their offensive line, and they realized that we can't with our defense. Here's a fake. And coming up field for Tyler for the first down off the fake punt. It is TJC's Ziggy Loa, freshman defensive lineman out of Tacoma, Washington. And Ziggy Loa has the first down, ended up being stopped by Jamari Seals. But a nice job on the special teams on the fake punt. And there is a first down for Tyler at the 42-yard line. So Loa is able to gain eight off the fake punt. Yep, absolutely good play. Good time to call it, too. You're, you're not really in fake punt yardage, but um, they fooled the defense and made a good job. So trips to the left and one to the right now for Tyler as maybe the Apaches have some extra breath of life in them. First down. Thomas will take the snap and hand it off. And it was a hold just for a moment for Tyler's Ashton Haynes. And then he was ankle tackled at the 45 Ashton for a gain of three. Second down Tyler and seven. So the Rangers game on defense. Three, second, Cal Varner seven, makes the stop. He's come up big in games as of late with a minute 54 to go. Second down, it's again Haynes going left side, has a little bit more room as he gets to the 50-yard line, the midfield stripe. And so the Rangers have Vincent Page on the stop, and it's a third down, call it two, for Tyler Junior College. Come heck or high water, Tyler's going to try to run that ball. Thomas will look over to the sideline this time. Minute 22 left in the first half of play. Third down and two, the snap, and it's going to be Haynes one more time, and he's going to be stopped short of the first down. They might give him the 49. I don't think so. I think the referee's just towed him between the 49 and midfield stripe. So fourth down for Tyler with a minute four to play. Yeah, there was nothing there. I assume they'll go for it here, though. And they do give him the yard to the 49, so fourth down and one for TJC. 52 seconds on the clock. Trips to the left, one to the right for the Apaches. Kilgore leading this one 21 to five. There's the snap and the fake. Thomas is rolling to his right on fourth down. He's gonna fire this ball upfield and it should be caught for a first down 
and they're going to say it's complete. And Trey Taylor does make the catch for the first down in Kilgore territory. And where will they put the ball down here? They will have it at the 29-yard line of the Rangers with 37.4 to play. Yeah, that play turned out all right, but uh, he could have easily run for the first down. He was taking a chance by launching that ball. That's a 20-yard completion, Thomas to Taylor. First down for Tyler Junior College. At the Kilgore 29, snap goes to Thomas. Looking upfield, fires this one deep, has a man wide open over the middle and overshoots him. Incomplete, intended for Makai Rice. Jaheim Patterson just puts his hands on his helmet because he's thinking he could have had better coverage. It's probably more of a sigh of relief there. Well, that was the situation. The quarterback was just late getting to his receiver. When he was about 15, 18 yards downfield, he was wide open and could have caught the ball very easily. But by the time he threw the ball, the Kilgore safety got over there and uh, interrupted his route. So timeout on the field, injured Apaches, Elijah Gardner, a freshman timeout. offensive lineman Kilgore out of Dallas, Texas. Kilgore has called a timeout here, but Elijah Gardner is on the field for Tyler. So let's take a break. We will take a 30-second timeout, a 30-second break, 31.2 seconds left in the second quarter. Kilgore 21, TJC 5, a 30-second timeout on KTBB. And welcome back to Ari St. John Memorial Stadium. 31.2 seconds to play in the first half. Kilgore College 21, Tyler Junior College 5. The Apaches with a second and 10 from the Kilgore 29-yard line. As Tyler splits two wide receivers out to the right, two to the left as well. In the backfield, it is Haynes, the running back, with Josh Thomas. Taylor in motion for a little bit. Thomas takes the snap. He's going to look upfield. Here comes the rush. He runs into his own man again and gets ankle tackled. And that, once again, is Xavier Tibbs, who comes in and makes the stop on Thomas at the 36-yard line. That's a loss of seven to make it a third down and 17. And again, the Tyler quarterback, Thomas, trying to make a move, runs into an offensive lineman. That slowed him down. Yep, absolutely. He, he was really locked in as a wide receiver, trying to run a pulse from the right side to the middle of the field. And... Uh, just never got off him, and by that time, the defensive line got him. So we have another timeout here taken. Tyler with one timeout remaining, the Kilgore College Rangers with two. Again, as a reminder, for those of you watching today, we will switch everything over to our homecoming festivities, performances by both schools' bands and drill teams. So that is coming up on our halftime show. Those of you listening on KTBB, we will have an interview with Willie Gooden, the head coach of the Kilgore College Rangers. Also a look at our first half scoring summary for today's ball game. So that and more ahead on our Ranger football halftime report on KTBB. So the timeout is over. Players going back onto the field now as Tyler faces a third and 17 from the Kilgore 36 yard line with 24.1 seconds to go. So double wideouts will be going again to each side for the Apaches. Thomas awaiting the snap with Haynes in the backfield with him. Calling signals, waiting the snap, takes the snap. Here comes the rush. Thomas fires it quickly. Ball caught by Adams at the 30, and he will go out of bounds at that point. So he picks up six, fourth down and 11 with 19.5 to play. And now the Apaches will... Send Christian Baxter on for the field goal. He's a very good place kicker, as we've talked about. And so this one, as well as in his range, he did connect on a 47-yard field goal in the first quarter. That opened the scoring of the ball game. Here, the ball will be spotted at the 36, so this will be a 46-yard attempt for Baxter. Yeah, that play was meant just to get him a little bit closer for a field goal. They weren't trying to get the first down. So Baxter waiting the snap. And we have a timeout on the field, and the kick was blocked, and the Rangers called the timeout. How often does that happen, Bob, where you are going to call the timeout to ice the kicker, and your team makes the play, 
as you're calling the timeout and it negates a block field goal. Yeah, that's a, that's a new one on me. I, I don't know if they didn't like their alignment or they thought there was a fake on or something, but uh, yeah, they neg negated a nice block by that player. And a potential return yep. as the ball sailed away from the Tyler offensive line, actually more toward us, our broadcast position. That surely could have been something the Rangers might have picked up. Instead, the Rangers called the timeout, 18.1 seconds to play. And so with that, we'll go ahead and keep it right here as both teams will end up returning to the field probably fairly quickly to get this going one more time. Trying to ice the kicker, Christian Baxter. You don't get many opportunities to block a kick. And so the Rangers might be shaking their head there. Yeah, I, I think the kicker helped a little bit there. With He, he launched it a little bit low, but um, great job by that number one. He, he got up off his feet very well. Well, Bob, they're bringing the offense back out on the field now on fourth down and 10 from the 29-yard line. Yeah, I guess they probably think with 18 seconds left that uh, there's nothing, nothing to lose. They'll uh, try to get the first down. If not, they'll go into a prevent and try to go in at halftime with no more points scored on them. All right, so here come the Rangers swapping players out. So one more play for Tyler with 18.1 to go, fourth and 10 from the 29-yard line. There's a snap to Thomas, five-step drop, looking upfield, the pocket collapses, now he's rolling to his left. Derek Burns giving chase, flags are down, Thomas upfield to the 20, and he goes out of bounds at the 15-yard line with 7.7 .7 seconds to go. Now you would think he would have the first down, a Tyler player's helmet, it looks like the way he's reacting, holding his left ear, it might have been ripped off his head. So we will not be able to tell you which way the flag is going. Yeah, the helmets aren't made to come off easy. If, uh, <laughs> if, uh, that, we've seen much too much of that today. So I, and it, it, you're right, it can tear, tear the lobe right up, up off your face. All right, so we'll see what this penalty call is going to be. Again, is it against Tyler or Kilgore? Right now, where they're hanging around with the football, is hard to tell. Here he comes. Personal foul, number 73 of the offense. He continued to participate in the play after his helmet came off. 15-yard penalty, fourth down. Well, the penalty goes against a young man who had his hat ripped off, Tony Lynn, a sophomore out of Shreveport. He seemed to be the victim losing his helmet. Again, we cannot tell you how he lost his helmet. But he loses his helmet on the play, and because he participated after the fact instead of letting up, he ends up being flagged for the personal foul. Yeah, that's like pouring salt in the wound, wound of his torn ear, because um, it's hard to just stop. You know, you're in the midst of that play, that thing comes off, you want to keep going, but um, yeah, that's a fortunate break. That would have been a first down well in fibril territory. And they had enough time to kick one more. Now 7.7 .7 to play, and Tyler will have to punt it away. The line of scrimmage, the Kilgore 44. There is Randall just launching it downfield. Phoenix will take it at the eight to the 10. He's gonna get drugged down at that point. Nice tackle on the special teams by Tyler's Matthew Cooks. And the first half comes to an end with the Rangers leading by 16 points. At the intermission from Ari St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore, Texas. It's the Kilgore College Rangers 21 and the Tyler Junior College Apaches five. We will take this time out as we head to our Ranger football halftime report on KTBV. We'll look at our first half scoring summary for today's ball game. Have an interview with Willie Gooden, the head coach of the Kilgore College Rangers. That and more coming up ahead. For those of you watching, we will go ahead and give you the opportunity to enjoy our halftime festivities. Again, the halftime score has Kilgore College leading Tyler 21 to 5. This is Kilgore College football on 97.5 FM, KTBB, and KTBB.com. And now, for your halftime entertainment, we proudly present the 
internationally famous Tyler Junior College Apache Bells. Leading the Bells out onto the field is head dance captain Anna Laura Elizararis from Houston. Dance captains from left to right are Savannah Williams from Mansfield, Emma McDaniel from Katie, Caroline Ott from Tyler, and Bailey DeWolf from Lindale. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the field, your Tyler Junior College Apache Band. Today, the Apache Band is proud to present their 2023 production, Dance the Night Away, featuring hits from Harry Styles and Dua Lipa. In 2022, he rocked New York City for 15 days straight with his hits including Music for a Sushi Restaurant and Watermelon Sugar. Featuring trombone soloist Caleb Hafner, the Apache Band rocks the RE St. John Memorial Stadium with the music of Harry Styles.
throughout the show, we are excited to feature the Apache Punch Drumline, our front ensemble, and our touch of gold color guard, with music made famous by the movie Barbie. Here is Dua Lipa's Dance the Night Away. and gentlemen, the Tyler Junior College Apache Band. Drum majors for the band are Crispin Davenport and Juan Nahara. Feature twirler is Avery Prinka. Touch of gold captains are Faith Hunt and Lorelei Michael Wicks. Drumline captain is Aubrey in Washington. I'm Parker Phillips, the traveling voice of the Apache Band and a proud alum. Please welcome back to the field your Apache Bells.
Ladies and gentlemen, your Apache Bells and Apache Band. Look for the Apache Bells on Thanksgiving Day as featured performers of the 74th Houston Thanksgiving Day Parade. Mark your calendar for the Christmas Extravaganza Show on December 16th. The Apache Bells are under the direction of Jacelyn Schaefer and, artist and artistic director Christy Evans. Graduate assistant is Lily Capetillo. Feathers up and go Apaches! Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Kilgore College Homecoming 2023. The Rangerettes would like to extend a special welcome home to members of the Rangerettes Forever and alumni of the Ranger Band. Today we celebrate halftime pageantry on the very field where halftime was changed forever 83 years ago. And now, let the Rangerettes entertain you with their disco prop routine to shake your groove thing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field, under the direction of Derek Lagozo, Director of Bands, Jordan Jenkins, Director of Twirling, and Drum Majors Remington Raven and Jade Washington, one of Texas' traditional and outstanding marching bands, the Kilgore College Ranger Marching Band. This year's halftime production is entitled Beyond, featuring today the music Tommy Part 3, Pinball Wizard by The Who, and Caribbean Nights by Roland Barrett. Enjoy beyond.
Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the world famous Kilgore College Rangerettes. The Rangerettes, the officers from left to right, are Lieutenant Marlene Zamora from Donna, Lieutenant Ella Bird from Round Rock, Lieutenant Ves Vanessa Puskins from Flower Mound, Lieutenant Bailey Ruiz from Keller, and in the center, the captain, Haley Triplett from Deer Park. It's tradition. It's their trademark. It's the high kick. You say the neon lights are bright on Broadway, on Broadway. You say there's always magic in the air, on Broadway. But when you're walking down the street, and you ain't had enough to eat, the glitter runs right off and you're nowhere. And here they are, folks, the Rangerettes. In December, the Rangerettes will travel to Hawaii to perform in the opening ceremonies of the annual Pearl Harbor Memorial Parade. Director of the Rangerettes is Miss Dana Blair. Assistant Director and Choreographer is Miss Shelley Wayne. Assistant Choreographer is Miss Angela Alds. And your announcer has been Mark Freed, the voice of the Rangerettes.
ladies and gentlemen, this announcement. Come to Dodson Auditorium today after the game to get your scare on at the Dodson Haunted Tours. The Haunted Auditorium is open tonight from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. on the Kilgore campus. Cost to tour the Dodson Auditorium Haunted House is $10 for KC students and $15 general admission. We hope you all come to Dodson Auditorium tonight to tour the Haunted Auditorium. And welcome back to Kilgore College Football on 97.5 FM KTBB, also on the KTBB app, ktbb.com, and we rejoin our viewers on the Kilgore College YouTube channel. We hope you enjoy the halftime festivities. Our halftime score has Kilgore leading Tyler 21 to five. 15 fresh minutes have been put on the clock, so we're about ready to start the third quarter of play. Real quickly, we'll take a look at our Southwest Junior College Football Conference standings. Kilgore and Tyler are tied for first place with records of four and one. Overall, the Rangers five and one, Tyler five and two. New Mexico Military Institute in third place with a four and two mark and five and three overall. Trinity Valley Community College is in the four spot with Navarro College, both teams at three and two in conference play. Overall, TBCC five and two, Navarro at three and three. Cisco College is three and three in the conference, four and three overall. Blinn and Northeastern Oklahoma winless, 0 and five in conference play. Overall, Blinn is two and five, Northeastern Oklahoma at 0 and seven. This game is for first place, at least for the end of this week, with another week of regular season action to go in the Southwest Junior College Football Conference. And that's a look at our SWJC FC standings as we're about ready to get the third quarter underway. Kilgore and Tyler from RE St. John Memorial Stadium. And we're glad to have you with us along the way on KTBB and the Kilgore College Sports Network. The kickoff for the Rangers is taken near the 15 yard line and Zeke Freeman has it up to the 22. Nice job on the special teams for Tyler Junior College helping out on the stop for TJC. It is John Solitaire. So first down for the Kilgore Rangers and they'll have it at the 22 yard line. Yeah, they had a right return on there and just uh, he couldn't quite get to where the blockers were for him. So here we go, first down for the Kilgore Rangers. As they come out onto the field, Cameron Peters, who had three first half touchdown passes, leads the way for Kilgore College. And Phoenix will jog out to the right hand side. Marshall is split wide out to the left. Now Freeman goes in motion and we'll have a flag down on the play here before things even get started. You don't want to start the third quarter off that way. Absolutely not. Kilgore. Another First mental mistake. And yeah. if you notice, Manny, they've got number three sitting in the middle of the field now, so they have made a halftime adjustment. They're not going to let that uh, guy run down the sideline anymore. All right, so a timeout was called by Kilgore right off the bat. So eight seconds into the third quarter, the Rangers call a timeout. So we'll take the quick one as well. Let's take a 30-second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB. And we are back to action, and here comes Kilgore on first down. The ball to the 20-yard line, 14.45 to play, just starting the third quarter, and Dominique Williams will carry the football to the 20. And at 14.35 to play, it's a second down. The Rangers did lose five yards for a legal procedure right before that timeout. And so the timeout was called for the Rangers to be able to kind of get themselves together. So 14.23 to play and Thomas loses yard as well. Actually, I take that back. The timeout was called before the flag. And so Thomas on the first down carry ends up losing yardage to the 20, a loss of three, second down and 13. So here's Cameron Peters on a fake, a couple of skips, and he gets upended at the 22 yard line. So he will get back a couple of yards and make it a third down and 11. So a nice job. And now we have another flag on the play for Tyler. Javius Lyons made the stop and now some join on the far side of the field, Bob. And again, we have a flag on the play. Yeah, I just happened to catch that. and. I 
I don't know him that well, but uh, that was number two, Cameron Peters again, who got in somebody's face, and I don't know if he After was. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 41 of the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, well, that's a young man that we didn't even see on the play, Will Hatter, so he must have been in the pile of players, and Will must have said a few things he should not have. And so what ended up being a three-yard loss on first down where the Rangers had to call a timeout to avoid a penalty. They lost three on the first down play. And then on second down, Peters gets tripped up. He's able to gain a couple of yards. And then the penalty, and Kilgore has a first down at the 37. Yeah, you just absolutely can't do that. I know it's tough. It, you get emotions, but uh, that's the difference between winning and losing a lot of times. So 13.49 to play. The Rangers with the first down, leading 21 to 5 here in the third quarter. Peters, all kinds of time, is going to throw it incomplete, and that was almost intercepted by Lyons. Peters wanted to get rid of that, but Lyons almost made a diving pick. Yeah, he was looking for his tight end, Donovan Johnson, and uh, Donovan took it up a little bit deeper, and the pressure made him throw it short, and you're right, it almost was picked off. So second down and 10, Kilgore at the 37-yard line. 13.40 to play, just starting the third quarter. The Rangers leading this one 21 to 5. And so lots of halftime entertainment on this homecoming day. And now back to football as it's now becoming more cloudy here in Kilgore. Dominique Williams gets the carry. He'll cross the 40 to the 42-yard line. There's a lot of Dominique white shirts and blue shirts in there, and poor Dominique is on the bottom of the pile. And now you have a third down for the Rangers. So that'll get the ball up the field to the 42-yard line. And so now you're looking at a third down, a five-yard pick of that time by Williams. Yep, they're going to impose their will. Kilgore's going to run this ball, and we'll see what happens. So a third down and five with 13.07 to play. As Peters looks to the sideline before taking the snap, trips to the left for Kilgore College. Williams is in the backfield. There's six on the play clock for the Rangers. Snap goes to Peters. Here comes the rush. Peters is going to fire over the middle. Has Freeman wide open to the 35, to the 30, to the 20 yard line. Freeman with the first down for the Kilgore College Rangers. What a beautiful pass by Peters to Freeman. Jacob Robinson, a freshman DB from Argyle, made the stop for Tyler, but at the 20 yard line of Tyler Kilgore with the football. Yeah, that was a great job. He ran basically a skinny post, which is just you run down the field, and instead of going at a 45 across, you kind of just go up up a little bit less angled and you split the defense and it was a great play. 38 yard pass play, Peters to Freeman. They hook up for a long one again. First down, Kilgore at the 20 yard line of Tyler. Snap goes to Peters. Out of the backfield, it goes to Williams. He's at the 20. He cuts it back to the 15. Dominique to the 10, to the five, into the house. It's a touchdown, Kilgore College. Dominique Williams gets into the end zone for the score for the Rangers with 12.15 to play in the third quarter. Kilgore 27 and Tyler 5, a 20 yard pass, Peters to Williams. Yeah, that was just a simple little drag route. He came out of the backfield and just circled to his left, picked up a great block by number four, Michael Phoenix, that freed him up and then uh, just got himself into the end zone. Good play, great play. Four touchdown passes for Cameron Peters today. And so Christopher Baldazzo on for the point after touchdown for Kilgore. Awaiting the snap. Here it comes. Ball is down. Kick is on the way. And that one is easily through the uprights. The kick is good. Timeout on the field. 12-15 to play in the third quarter. New score. Rangers 28. Apaches 5. We take this 60-second timeout on KTBB. All right. Thank you, Ethan. Number five, Trey Taylor, 
number 21, Logan Johnson. And we are back to action at Ari St. John Memorial Stadium, 12-15 to play in the third quarter. Kilgore College 28 and Tyler Junior College 5. Manny Almanza with you on the Kilgore College Sports Network along with Bob Brewer. So 28-5, the Rangers with the lead over the Apaches. And there is the kick away by Vasquez. Ball is caught at the seven yard line and Logan Johnson will pitch it back. Upfield as Makai Rice. No, make that Trey Taylor. He's able to get out of a tackle where I thought he was going to be down. And the second time he does get twisted down, making the stop on the special teams for Kilgore College is Riley Redden. And it's a first five, down Trey for Taylor. Tyler Junior College at 12.04 to play. Tyler with a football and then will mark it down at the Kilgore 18 yard line. So for the Rangers, it was a 78 yard drive to start the third quarter. Williams ended up finishing it off with a 20 yard pass from Peters. Peters fourth touchdown pass of the ball game. Baldazzo with the extra point kick. Big play on the drive was a 38 yard pass to Zeke Freeman. So here we go, first down. There's the snap and coming up field with it for Tyler Junior College. It's a freshman running Larian back, Laverian Logan. Logan. He's from Hobart, Indiana. 5'11", 210, and he advances the ball up to the 23-yard line. Gain of five, second down and five. Josh Thomas comes in at quarterback now for the Tyler Junior College Apaches. So the Apaches with a football at their own 24, make a 23-yard line. Thomas throws the ball very low, and the umpire will rule it incomplete on the coverage. Thomas it is Vincent Page, page that was intended Makes for Jaquan McGee. Yeah, that was just a matter of the quarterback with happy feet. He didn't set himself and didn't throw the ball more than five, six yards. 11.34 to play in the third quarter. Kilgore 28 and Tyler 5. So again, you have double wide to each side. As the snap goes to Thomas, under a heavy rush, Thomas comes forward. Tibbs grabbing him first, and Page finishes him off. As Thomas will get to the 22, he loses two to make it a fourth down and seven. And again, it's a three and out for the Apaches. The Kilgore defense very solid in this contest. A little bit of give at times, but for the most part, they're very solid. Yeah, absolutely, man. They're, like I've said before, they're starting to impose their will on uh, TJC. So we are ready for the punt now by Colin Randall. So Randall will be kicking it away. Line of scrimmage was a 22. Phoenix on the run, muffs it, and just falls on it at the 44-yard line. Nice job by Phoenix to get on. It took a shot right at the end of it. Gets up a little slow, but he is okay. And a first down coming up for Kilgore. Good field position at the 44 with 10.54 to play. Very much so, but very dangerous play by Phoenix. He came up fast for the ball and caught it pretty much at his ankles. Um, I know he was trying to stop the ball from rolling, but uh, good job by him, though. 35-yard punt by Randall, and the Rangers take over at the 44-yard line, already having scored once in this third quarter with a lead of 28-5, to and Kilgore College will come back out here now on offense. Congratulations to our homecoming king and queen. The queen was Emma Sheneman. She represented the Kilgore College Rangerettes. Emma is from Austin, Texas, and is a dance major. And our king, uh, we'll tell you about that in a second. Sweet to Zeke Freeman at the 45-yard line left side, trying to turn the corner, gets drug out of bounds at the midfield stripe. Good job on the play for Tyler by Cisco Caston playing on defense as he's able to track down Zeke Freeman. So that is going to be at the midfield stripe, a gain of six, second down and four with 10.35 to play. But back to the homecoming king, it is... Villalami Wolfgram. He is a Kilgore College football player. And so congratulations to the homecoming king, Villalami Wolfgram. He is from Fort Worth. That's his 6'4", 285 defensive lineman who right now is getting a lot of recruiting offers after he leaves Kilgore College. So for the Rangers on second down, it's going to be Caden Meredith coming up field, and he is going to be tossed down. Might get back to the Caden line of Meredith scrimmage. Nice Meredith. job defensively by Back Tyler's Emmanuel Ogans. Yep, he closed that hole very quickly. Again, Kilgore is bent on trying to run the ball. And the Rangers, in doing that, already have a 28 to five lead, 9.48 to play, the clock is moving. And for Kilgore, they obviously want to score more, but also moving that clock is pretty important as well. Absolutely, that's why they're doing it. Um, they're in a position right now of let's just get out of here healthy and look for the next week. 
So double white as to each side for Kilgore College. Snap goes to Peters on third down, rolling to his right. He's going to have room for the first down and more. Cam will slide down at the 40. He heard Bob Brewer tell him to do that in the first half, and Cameron slides down at the 40 for the first down. Well, I'm sure I had nothing to do with it, but one of the coaches probably at halftime once said, uh, do me a favor, get down. That will be an eight-yard pickup by Peters to the 42 of Tyler and a first down for the Rangers. Well, the sun is breaking out over the press box. We still have a lot of clouds in front of us from our view here. But the sun coming out a little bit more now. There was a little bit of a worry as to whether there's going to be rain or not. But uh, for right now, things are looking pretty good here in Kilgore. Rangers up by a score of 28 to 5. At the 42-yard line, Kilgore moving south to north. That's right to left. First down for KC. This is going to be a give. Nope, it's going to be a keeper by Peters who wriggles out of a tackle, then fires a pass to Marshall at the 40. Marshall to the 30. Marshall tackled from behind at the 22-yard line. Cameron Peters That's made that play, but wait, a flag is down at the line of scrimmage, so I think all of that might be for naught. Yeah, it's in the vicinity of a holding penalty. And indeed it is, but I tell you what, Cameron, I thought he had handed off to Meredith, pulled it out of his belly, thought he was going to be tackled, escaped the tackle, and then found Marshall, which had the potential for a bigger game than what it was, all wiped out because of a penalty, but still not a bad move by Peters. Yeah, I think it was a run pass. It was a run pass option, and the play was set up the way it transpired, except he got so much pressure that he got to the receiver late with the ball, but they still made a good play out of it. 8.31 to go, trips to the left for the Kilgore College Rangers. So the penalty moves the ball back to the 48 of KC, first and 20 from that point. Peters looking toward the Kilgore sideline. We're at 8.30 of the third quarter. We've had a wonderful crowd here for homecoming today. Snap goes to Peters, left side. It is Meredith who's turning it up the field. He stiff arms a defender, and then there obviously is going to be a little bit of uh, pushing, and then... Cooler heads prevailed. That was Mike Ray, a sophomore defensive back, who uh, was the victim of the stiff arm as the ball goes down at the 46 yard line. Another flag down, though, in the backfield. Let's see what it is. Personal foul, face mask, number 37 of the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down, number 51, right man in the game. And so it was a face mask against Tyler. It was away from the play, Bob, as we were following the play where Meredith had the stiff arm. I thought he might have been called for a face mask. thought he got it up a little too high. But away from the tackle is where the face mask occurred. Absolutely. But, and I agree with you 100%. The offensive player has no more right to go to the other player's face mask and hang on. That's the key. You can push, but you can't hang on. So I guess they thought he didn't do it, but he definitely was up, up in the face mask. Eight minutes to play, Kilgore 28, Tyler five. Trips to the left, first down for the Rangers at the 31 yard line of Tyler following the penalty. And Meredith will get across the 30 to the 29 for a gain of two, make it a second down and eight. And of course you heard the referee say that number 51 may stay in the game. That's Kilgore's Austin Yeager. He's a freshman offensive lineman from Richmond. He had his helmet taken off which is why they said he could stay in the game because he didn't take it off on purpose or it was not his fault that it was removed from his head. That's right. If you get it ripped off, then you're allowed to stay in. Sore ears and all. Not very pleasant, but Austin <laughs> is on the sideline right now, and so he's definitely okay with 7.20 to go. So second down and eight from the 29 of Tyler Kilgore with the football. Trips to the left now for the Rangers, and it's a handoff. Meredith up the middle to the 20 to the 17-yard line. Caden Meredith. And he'll have the Ranger first down, stopped from behind by Kayvon Evans. So that's a nice run. That's an 11-yard gain by Caden Meredith, making a 12-yard gain to the 16-yard line. Yeah, this is a drive exactly what Coach wants to see. You're eating the clock. You're starting to get a little bit more effective in the running game. It's a win-win. Trips to the left this time for the Rangers. Meredith in the backfield for Kilgore with 6.42 to play. Snap on first down. And it'll be a pass to the left side of the end zone to Marshall, incomplete, and he also lost his helmet, and the flag comes down at the end of the play. So there was a lot of contact there. If it's interference, it's a very late flag. I thought personally it was a jump ball on the coverage for Tyler. It was Jihadi Adams. Now we'll see what this flag is going to be, but Marshall definitely lost his hat on the play. From where we were at, I couldn't see 
what would have caused that, but uh, the referees were a lot closer than we are. Yeah, I think they're going to call a push. He got up in the face mask, which was one thing, but then he extended the arm, so I think the referee probably saw that and assumed there had to be a push there. All right, so the Rangers with the lead in this third quarter at 6.33. It's a 23-point lead at 28-5. to five. Tyler with a field goal in the first quarter and a safety as Kilgore snapped the ball over the head of Baldazzo out of the end zone. And that's Tyler's only points, unable to generate any offense save for the field goal. Pass interference against Tyler moves the football into first and goal situation for Kilgore. The ball spotted at the two yard line for the Rangers. Yep, they're bringing their second tight end. So I assume they're gonna try to smash it in behind both their tight ends. So on first down and goal to go, it is gonna be Caden Meredith who gets ripped down from behind at the 10 yard line. Oh, what a great play defensively for the Apaches, man. Coming in there, it's Eldrick Griffin for Tyler Junior College. Yeah, he just split the blockers and tackled them in the backfield. Lost back to the nine yard line, makes it second down and goal. So the Rangers lose big time yardage on that play, losing seven, second and goal from the nine for Kilgore with 6.08 to play. So back to the nine yard line. And the Rangers will have one wide out to each side. Peters, the quarterback, Meredith right behind him. It's gonna be a fake by Peters. Is it go into the end zone? That's an easy touchdown. <laughs> Michael Phoenix makes the grab in the end zone for the score for Kilgore College. Okay, and the Rangers add another Michael touchdown Phoenix. to the total to make it 34 to five. That was an easy pass by Peters. Phoenix broke open to the back of the end zone. Another flag is down, but Phoenix able to make the reception and work the toes before he got out of the back of the end zone for the score. Yeah, he did a nice job on the release. Got inside his defensive back whose school do not let your, peop your person inside. So good job, good throw by the quarterback. Peters now with five throws for touchdowns today. You know, after the game against Tyler in Tyler, Bob, he was the National Offensive Player of the Week. That's more of my conduct on Kilgore College. Every One of the offensive the linemen the gets the offensive, uh, rather the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for the Rangers, number 74, and that's Cameron Lambert. And again, you don't want to lose your head even after you score the touchdown. You're winning big 34 to five. You're about to go up by 30 if Baldazzo makes the extra point kick. Just senseless things. Waiting the snap, here it is. Ball is down, kick is on the way, and that one is no good. That was a line drive kick that was no good by Baldazzo. After last week, you would think he would not miss again, but he misses that one. So with 5.47 to play in the third quarter, it's now the Rangers 34, and Tyler Junior College 5 will take a 60-second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB. Deep once again for the Apaches, number 27, Jihad Ed Adams, number 17. Another touchdown on the scoreboard for the Kilgore College Rangers. A nine yard touchdown pass from Cameron Peters to Michael Phoenix. Extra point kick, however, was no good by Chris Baldazzo. 547 left in the third quarter. Kilgore College now with a 34 to 5 lead over the Tyler Junior College Apaches. So the kickoff will be at the 20 yard line for Kilgore by Vasquez again because of the 15 yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Kilgore College. Kickoff is back and it bounces over the shoulder of the return man who almost slipped, picked it up at 
the 11 yard line and he's not gonna get very much after that as guess who, Isaiah Jones is there on the stop on the special teams for the Rangers. The able to put down the return man, Jihadi Adams. And in the meantime, back here at the 40 yard line, the Kilgore College place kicker actually getting tangled up with a couple of Tyler players and another Ranger player was in there as well. And flags came down after that. Yeah, I think it's gonna be on the, the Apaches. They, they're starting to lose their cool a bit. They realize the game's slipping away and they're, they're getting a little bit angry. So 540 to play in the third quarter. There's plenty of game left, but the Rangers have been in control of this one, winning 34 to five. Play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 61 of the return team. Half the distance to the go. First down timer. And so that's what you heard. A sportsmanlike conduct against Tyler Junior College. That goes half the distance to the goal. And so the ball carrier didn't get very far upfield on the kickoff return and the penalty moves the ball back to the 11 yard line, half the distance to the goal, and it's a first down for the Apaches. So at the 22 yard line is where it was. Now it's at the 11. Thomas rolling to his right, fires it upfield. Trey Taylor makes a diving grab and then rolls to the turf, and they'll mark him down at the 25 yard line. That will be a 14 yard gain and a first down for Tyler. That's the second good catch Trey Taylor's done. He's, he's very good at going down and getting the ball low. Ball so at the 25-yard line, that is where Tyler will have it. So the Rangers had scoring drives today of 43, 68, 46, 78, and the last one was 56 yards. Pass up field, and that one might be grabbed off the turf. We'll see if the referee calls it complete or not. It was Jaquan McGee, and they're going to make it a catch at the 30. That's a five-yard gain, second, second and down five, and, five. and five. Yeah, I don't think that would pass the replay test. <laughs> I think it touched the ground a little bit. Trips to the right now for Tyler on second down. This is going to be Logan Johnson left side crossing the 30. He'll get to the 33, so Logan picks up three yards on the play. And it'll be a third carry. down and two, so Vincent Page is in there helping out for Kilgore. Quickly by number one, Vincent Page. They're Maybe committed to the run game, I'll give them that. Double wide outs to the left, one to the right now for Tyler with 421 to play. Thomas will take the snap, give it off to Johnson, sweeping left side, and the Rangers bottle him up. And so Vincent Page is there, also for Casey as well. It's Kawan Robinson, and so Johnson gets to the no gain on the play. It's a fourth down and two, and it will be Tyler kicking the ball away again with 3.59 left in the third quarter. Yep, they just, they just can't run the ball, and it seems as though they're having trouble passing as well, so it's going to, like I said, it's a long day. So back on to kick it away, it's going to be Colin Randall. Randall takes the snap and he does get the kick away under a rush. Ball will bounce. Oh, it hits a Tyler player on his helmet at the 35 yard line. The flag is down at the 29. So we'll see where they're gonna place this football. The referee is gonna mark it at the 33 yard line. But that caught the Tyler player right on top of the head. Yep, the referee will throw a sandbag. That's where the ball's gonna be going. But there's also a penalty flag. I don't know if that was for Something that happened that I didn't see, but he's picking it up. As a 34-yard kick by Randall. And so for Kilgore College, it was a mistake by the Rangers. Illegal substitution on the special teams. And so that will result in a first down for Tyler. They get a gift. The ball will be at the 37 now. Tyler gets the football back after the Kilgore mistake. Yeah, that's the second time they've made a mistake on a fourth down play that gave the TJC Apaches a first down. Tyler averages 205.4 yards rushing per contest. And so that is one reason why as we take the snap on first down, Thomas will fire this ball deep downfield, has Taylor open and he just overthrows him at the 22 yard line. Second Thomas down and Thomas 10 for 10 Tyler. Five. Tyler averages 470.3 yards on offense during the season, averaging 264.9 passing. But again, they run the ball for over 205 yards of ball game. So that could be their bread and butter, or seems to be their bread and butter, which obviously sets up the passing game as well. But the Rangers are not letting them do that today. No, nope, the defensive line is having its way. 
So it is trips to the right for Kilgore, rather for Tyler on second down. And this time it's going to be Logan Johnson coming up the middle. And as you've already stated, it's not going to happen. <laughs> the Rangers put up again. Caden Kenny, who had a fumble return for Kilgore College last week, not for a score. He just picked up a loose ball and advanced it into scoring territory. Helps make the tackle. And the ball will be at the 39-yard line. So Tyler facing a third down. It's a third and eight from the 39. Yeah, the TJC running back kind of danced there. He did have a little opening, but um, I think he was expecting to get smacked. Snap goes to Thomas on third down. Caden Kenny with a blitz in the sack. Caden Kenny comes out of nowhere like fire and knocks Thomas to the turf at the 30, and it will be a fourth down, and once again, Tyler will have to kick it away. Caden Kenny came in there like lightning, and the sack will be marked at the 31-yard line, a loss of eight. Yeah, he just ran around David Hensley, a freshman offensive lineman for the Apaches, and, and made the sack. So conversely, for Kilgore College, let's talk about defensively, all right? Defensively, the Rangers allow 327.8 yards per game. Rushing-wise, allowing just 71.3 yards per contest. And that's the difference there. That's what is winning out as Michael Phoenix takes the punt. And he'll go down at the 35-yard line. Good coverage on special teams by Logan Johnson. And so we will see the first down coming up for Kilgore at its own 35 with a minute 59 left in the third quarter and the Rangers winning 34 to five. Yeah, those statistics, you, you hear the 200 yards rushing by TJC, but then you hear the 60 or 70 yards allowed by the Kilgore defense. Statistics can fool you sometimes. It sometimes has a lot to do with who you played, when you played them, somebody was hurt or something. Obviously, Kilgore's defensive line is, is above the offensive line for the Apaches today. Ball is at the 35-yard line, a 36-yard punt by Randall, and it's a first down for Kilgore at its own 35 with a minute 59 left in the third quarter. Rangers up by a score of 34-5 to five over the Apaches. And sweeping left side, Trey Epps. He escapes a tackle and has some room. Left sideline to the 40-yard line. Epps is to the 30. Epps is to the 20. Hasta la vista, baby. Touchdown, Kilgore. Trey Epps got an opening on the left side and scampered 65 yards for the touchdown. And the Ranger lead balloons to 40-5 to over Tyler with a minute 47 to play in the third quarter. One play, 65 yards, pay dirt for Trey Epps. Yeah, that was a, a, a great play. I'm not a homer, but uh, 88, Donovan Johnson, the tight end, did a great job of hooking his man and freed him up at the line of scrimmage. And at that point, he was gone. You are allowed to tell us when the tight end makes a good <laughs> play. Anytime you want to, Bob. Valdez on for the point after, and then the Rangers are going to have to get one of the players off the field, and that is going to be Tavion Sterling from Longview has to jog off and into the ball game. It's Villa Lamy Wolfgram, your homecoming king, comes in on special teams. He's still wearing his crown, I think. If he can fit it under the helmet, that's something <laughs> else with a minute 47 to go. Awaiting the snap. Here it comes. Ball is down. Kick is on the way. And this time, Baldazza knocks it through the uprights. The kick is good. With a minute 47 to play in the third quarter, it's a new score. Kilgore 41, Tyler 5. We'll take this 60-second timeout on 97.5 FM and 600 AM KTBB. Rangers 41, Apaches 5.
From the Grant and Flannery broadcast booth at Ari St. John Memorial Stadium, a minute 47 left to go in the third quarter. It's Kilgore College 41, Tyler Junior College 5. Kilgore scoring one play, 65 yards, 65 yard scamper around left end by Trey Epps. Baldazzo with the extra point kick. That's your Kilgore connection on the touchdown and the point after. Here's the kickoff by Longviews. Carlos Vasquez, the ball will be taken at the two yard line up to the five and to the 10, left side 15, up the gut to the 20, to the 30, big hole to the 40, to the midfield stripe and down at the Kilgore 48, a tremendous return by Jahadi Adams of Tyler Junior Tyler College, Adams. but a flag is Tyler down Vasquez. at the 27 yard line. Boy, Adams had a big hole there part in the middle of the field and got it up. That would have been a 50-yard return if it stands. I don't think it's going to. During the return, holding number 25 of the return team, 10-yard penalty, first down Tyler. So there you go. Penalty against Tyler holding on the return with a minute 38 to play in the third quarter. So Tyler had a great opportunity, Bob, at great field position, and it goes awry because of a penalty. It got to clean up the... Uh, clean up the penalties on special teams. It seems like we can't do anything, especially in the kicking game, um, without getting a penalty either on the return or personal foul on the coverage or something. And so Tyler, its own worst enemy on that particular play, has the ball back at the 18, and that is a big shift in field position. 34 yards in field position because of the penalty. First down pass up to the 15 and the 20, and then that's a nice gain by TJC's Terrence Nollings, a freshman out of Houston, and then he was flipped down at the end of the play. I believe that was Jalen Webb of Kilgore who might have been in there. And that ball goes down to the 24. That's a gain of six, second down and four. Double wideouts make a trip to the left and one to the right for Tyler with a minute 12 to play in the third. Thomas fading back, here comes the rush. Thomas goes down, back at the 19 yard line. The man on top of him is Quinton Butler, a sophomore defensive lineman out of St. Martinsville, Louisiana, six feet tall, 290 pounds. Yeah, I don't know if the viewers saw it, but on that previous play when that Isaiah Jones, number 30 for Kilgore, made a nice hit, he stood over the guy, and Coach Gooden was on the field in about two seconds telling him to maybe don't do that. Yeah, definitely don't do that. So now. it ends up being a loss of five <laughs> with 39 seconds to play. Third down and nine now for Tyler Junior College. Snap goes back to Thomas, rolling to his left. He's gonna oh. set up and fire this one deep downfield. Has a man, Taylor wide open at the 35 to the 30. Taylor's to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the five, and he's into the end zone for the Tyler touchdown. And Trey Taylor finally gets Tyler on the scoreboard with a touchdown with 21.3 to play in the third quarter. It's the Rangers 41 and the Apaches 11. Yeah, that's the, that's the connection that they missed on uh, in the first half where he was wide open, the quarterback overthrew him, but he just out ran past the quarterback. It wasn't a breakdown in coverage, the cornerback had him. I don't know why he squatted, but uh, you can't do that, especially with that player with that kind of speed. Well, Thomas connects with Taylor on an 81 yard touchdown pass for Tyler Junior College. And Christian Baxter has his extra point tip and it's no good. So Zeke Freeman is in there for Kilgore College. Also in there as well for the Rangers. It was Davion Moses, but the extra point kick is blocked and the Rangers are able to stop Baxter from poking it easily through the uprights. Cause again, he's a great kicker, but more importantly, Tyler Junior College gets the six points and it's now 41 to 11. Kilgore over Tyler, 21.3 to play in the third quarter. Let's take this short break, a 30 second timeout, a 30 second break on 97.5 KTBB. Come to Dodson Auditorium tonight after the game to get your scare on at the Dodson Haunted Tours. The Haunted Auditorium is open tonight from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. on the Kilgore campus. Cost to tour the Dodson Auditorium Haunted House is $10 for KC students and $15 general admission. We hope all you come to Dodson Auditorium tonight to tour the Haunted Auditorium. Well, just had a brief visit from a former Kilgore College football player, Cameron Kennedy. Good to see him come up. It's homecoming day at Kilgore College. And Cameron came up for a brief visit, got to meet Bob Brewer, and so exciting times here to have a lot of Rangers come back 
not only football players, but Rangerettes and band members and students. Just glad to have everybody back on campus for this weekend's activities. 21.3 to play in the third quarter, the Tyler scoring drive. It was an 81 yard touchdown pass from Thomas to Trey Taylor and the extra point kick was blocked at 21.3 seconds to play in the third quarter. There's the kick away and it will roll out of bounds as Baxter tried to go ahead and make sure it was not returnable and it wasn't because he kicked it out of bounds and Kilgore will get decent field position out of this with 21.3 to play in the third quarter. Well, Bob, Tyler finally got the break that they were needing to get. Down by 30 points still at 41 to 11 with 21.3 to play, but the Apache is able to go ahead and get that score. Yeah. It's like we said before, they've missed it a couple of times. Ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. First down, Kilgore. The drive was an 89 yard drive. It started at the 11 yard line. Tyler Junior College with an 81 yard touchdown pass. Thomas to Taylor. Again, the extra point kick was blocked. It was an 89 yard drive because of the penalty on the kickoff but Tyler was able to rebound from that. Taylor got open on the left sideline, such a beautiful pass play for TJC. However, again, third quarter down 41 to 11 and Kilgore will come back out. And Tyler Webb, who normally wears 19, he's wearing number 17 today. Tyler Webb will come in and quarterback now for the Kilgore College Rangers. Tyler Webb's first touchdown pass for the Rangers was his first pass as a Ranger back in September in Longview against Northeastern Oklahoma. He's got a great arm, two wide outs to the left, one to the right on first down. He's gonna go ahead and keep it on the run and he will get taken down at the 33 yard line. So a loss of two as Tyler Webb tried to carry it on his first time in the ball game and gets a handshake from the player who tackled him, Darian White. He's a freshman linebacker out of Waco. Uh, Tyler Webb, of course, probably knows him because Tyler came to us from Waco, Texas, actually from Idaho via Waco. In the third quarter, it is in the books, and the Kilgore College Rangers have a big lead over Tyler. Rangers 41, Apaches 11. Let's take this time out, a 60 second break as we head to the fourth quarter on 97.5 FM, KTVV and KTVV.com. Chick-fil-A, Aramaya, Baylor Scott and White Health, and TA Sports. Homecoming 2023 at RE St. John Memorial Stadium, and we're ready for the fourth quarter of play. Manny Almanza along with Bob Brewer. Kilgore on second down. Webb will air this one out right side. Has a man open at the 30, to the 20, to the 10, and the Rangers get a touchdown. Tyler Webb with a pass to Melvin Polk for the score for Kilgore College, and the Rangers now lead at 47 to 11. That's what we're talking about with Tyler Webb. He's able to get that one into the end zone for the score on the deep ball to Melvin Polk. That was a great throw. He put a lot of ball under the air and let his receiver run under it. Um, it seems like nobody wants to play defense in the secondary this second half. Everybody just runs by everybody. And the point after touchdown coming up now by Christopher Baldazzo out of the hold of Mason Welch. So Webb connects with Polk for the long bomb for the score. Here's the snap, the ball is down, the kick is on the way, and that one is through the uprights, the kick is good. 67 yard touchdown pass from Webb to Polk, and Kilgore's on the scoreboard at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Just 12 seconds into the fourth quarter, new score, Kilgore College 48, Tyler Junior College 11. Let's take this 60 second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB.
flag deep once again for the Apaches. Number 17, Jerome Bowser. Number 27, Jihad Adams. Kicking for the Rangers, number 41, Carlos Vasquez. Well, we didn't mean to be prophetic, but Tyler Webb, again, we mentioned his first pass as a Ranger against Northeastern Oklahoma in relief was a touchdown pass. Start of the fourth quarter on second and 12 from the Rangers 33, Webb just throws a 67 yard touchdown pass to Melvin Polk. Extra point kick is good by Valdazzo at 1448 of the fourth quarter and the Rangers lead at 48 to 11. It was a 65 yard drive, but on first down, Tyler Webb carried the ball and lost two, made up for it with a long bomb for the score. Yeah, like I said previously, he threw a real nice ball. He's got a nice strong arm, put a lot of air under it. Pitch and catch, touchdown. Tyler has the football at the 30 following the kickoff. And with 14.48 to play, actually they have it at the 25 yard line. And that's where Tyler will take over at the 25. The Apaches with a football, but the Rangers with a lead 48 to 11. Wow, big third quarter for the Rangers outscoring the Apaches 20 to six in that period. Yep. they've. They, they had the momentum and just uh, came out of halftime and decided that uh, they're going to try to put the nail in the coffin. Well, the Rangers certainly have taken control in this ball game. Probably really had it in the first half with a 21 to 5 lead at the period, and they've just kept on going. A nice pass on first down as the pass is complete. Thomas got it into the hands of Tavion Cord, a sophomore wide receiver out of Austin, Texas. And they'll move the ball up to the 35. That's 10 yards and a first down for the Apaches with 14.40 to play. Yeah, that's a play they've run multiple times. Uh, two receivers to one side. The receiver on the outside will run a 10-yard out. Receiver on the inside runs his curl. And to be honest with you, the curl is open all the time as well. So first down for Tyler at the 35-yard line, trailing 48 to 11. The snap goes to Thomas, rolling right-hand side. Here comes Page, Thomas gets away from him. Thomas is gonna pull it down and then go out of bounds, giving chase for the Rangers. It was Mauna Lokalani Jackson, a sophomore defensive lineman out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Nice job on the pronunciation. I had to practice that one. <laughs> His receivers aren't giving him any help, though. You roll to the right like that and you just keep running downfield, you've gotta stop and give, give a target to the guy. Um, reference in point, Mahomes to Kelsey. There you go. Ends up being a run of three by Thomas, second down and seven for the Apaches at the 37. Pass comes left side, and that is too hard and too high through the hands again of Mr. Cord, Tavian Cord. So now a third down for Tyler Junior College and seven from the 38 yard line. It's not like a broken record here, but same play. Curl, flat. That time that was incomplete, so 13.49 to play. And it's double wide outs to the right, one to the left for the Apaches. The Rangers having their way today. First game back in August was 49-35. Kilgore with the win. Pass comes downfield, left side, and it is incomplete. Almost picked off by Kilgore College's Damian Dunn. It was intended for Grant Peretz of Tyler Junior College. And so Tyler will kick it away with 13.42 to go. <laughs> Tyler got a break there. <clears throat> I'm basically sitting on the line of scrimmage looking right down the line. And number two for Tyler lined up off sides and the line judge was looking at it, but he decided, I guess, not to throw the flag. Must have to be somewhere after the game. Well, I think when it's 48 to 11, <laughs> there's the snap and the kick away by Colin Randall. Fair catch way by Michael Phoenix, and he'll have it at the 23 yard line. So that's where the Rangers will take over. Well, let's see if we can go longer than one or two plays with a bomb. 37 yard punt by Randall of Tyler Junior College. He's had a busy day today as the Ranger defense has controlled this contest. Kilgore leading 48 to 11 with 13.37 to go. Tyler shut it up on the sideline. I, I can't guarantee it, but I bet you the coach is going, gentlemen, we're gonna run this clock down. So double whiteouts to the left now and one to the right for Kilgore as Tyler Webb has returned to the lineup. Maddox in the backfield now. He got significant playing time last week against Trinity Valley. In fact, he got the start last week as Dominique Williams was a bit banged up. 
first down and the handoff goes to Maddox. Of course, Caden Meredith was banked up as well. Williams actually got the start last week, but Maddox got significant playing time and we're seeing him with his first carry today as Maddox picks up yardage to the 27, pick up a four, second down and six now for the Rangers with 13-14 to go. The Rangers have Alden Bradley in as a wide receiver. Yeah, Jadal and Kay, the, the left tackle, pulled at 6'7", 255 pounds, and, or 355, and landed right on his own running back. Double wide up to the left, one to the right on second down. Webb takes the snap. He's going to air this one out right side. That one hangs high in the air, and that's almost picked off. It was over the head of Bradley and almost picked off by Javius Lyons of Tyler Junior College. So with 12.47 to play, the Rangers have a third and six from their own 27. Yeah, that should have been a pick. The ball was wobbly, and I guess that's why he's playing corner and not wide receiver, but he should have caught the ball. I'm a little surprised Kilgore keeps throwing it. I guess I understand points have something to do with uh, your ranking, but um, I think they just want to get out of here without getting anybody hurt now. Well, the Rangers certainly, they have a game to look forward to on the road next week. That will be in Brenham against Blinn College. We'll let you know the broadcast details of that game on our Kilgore College Sports Network Facebook page. That's a delayed handoff to Maddox who almost bobbled it. He ends up getting run out of bounds at the 22 yard line. That was a bad looking play from the start for the Kilgore Rangers. And again, a Tyler player trying to get into it with a Kilgore player on the Kilgore sideline. Not a very good thing to do. Maddox in the meantime will lose five yards if the play stands. And it'll be a fourth down and 11 with 1240 to play in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that was a simple run pass option and Taylor Webb, I think couldn't decide whether I want to run or pass and he kind of hung on to that too long. I assume a lot of these guys knew each other from high school maybe because there seems to be a lot of mix-ups like I played against you in high school. Oh, I'm sorry. And so there you go. One of those is the penalty on number 45 for Tyler Junior College. That is Ziggy Loa. He's the man who actually gained the first down on the punt return, rather the fake punt in the first half of the contest. But as you were saying, Bob, they do play against each other a lot in high school. Yeah, there, there's, <laughs> there's no left lost, excuse me. So with the football, the Rangers <coughs> at the 39 yard line following the penalty. And so that will give Kilgore the first down with 12.24 to play. Tyler Webb claps his hands, takes a stab. Maddox is sweeping right side, and he is able to get up to the 45-yard line. So that's a nice run by Maddox. And let me see, for Maddox at 12.09 to play, it ends up being a pickup of six, second down and four. Do they mark him back? At, nope, they got him at the 45-yard line, so second down and four. And for Tyler Junior College, the man who made the stop was Darian White, but also Darian is having some words with the Kilgore sideline. Uh, I think at this point of the ball game, it's almost, you know, let's just finish up the ball game here, not get into any more altercations. Why would you want to add more penalties to it? Webb will go ahead and on the flip, gives it over to Dequavius Bowens, and Bowens is going to be hemmed in nicely by that Tyler defense and down at the 49-yard line. He will be close to the first down. Could have had more before Tyler able to shut it down. Helping out on the stop, it's Keelan Elder, a freshman from San Antonio, him and others on the play. But that will be the four yards exactly and the 49 on the first down for the Kilgore Rangers with 11-16 to go. Yeah, that was a good play. They've been faking that jet sweep, which is basically just a wide receiver runs across the quarterback's face. And uh, they haven't handed it off until that point, but um, a good, good job to get the first down. So the Rangers have a first down at the 49-yard line, make it their own 49-yard line with 10.57 to go. And this is going to be a stutter step, and then Maddox is going to fight forward. He'll just go up the middle and get to the 48 for a pick of a three on the Tyler side of the field, second down and seven. Maddox had to actually make a little bit of a hole, ended up being tackled on the play by Leslie Adindu. He's a sophomore defensive lineman from Dallas. You're good at those names, Manny. I respect that. Lots of practice, like I said. <laughs> 12, 10, 28 to play, and the Rangers have a 48 to 11 lead over Tyler. Second down for the Rangers and seven from the Tyler 48 yard line. Tyler Webb is the quarterback for Kilgore College. Man in motion is Bowens, another jet sweep, and Bowens is reversing field. Tyler Webb almost made a block, and then Bowens is gonna go down for a loss at the 45 yard line. 
That ends up being a loss of seven on the play to make it a third down with 9.59 to play. Third down and long. The Rangers will have the ball at their own 45-yard line. Bowens just got tracked down at reversing field. Yeah, just again, the, the jet sweep where he's running across the formation. But he, he should notice no one's following him, so turning around's not a good idea. You just got to take what you can get. Third and 14 for Kilgore at its own 45-yard line with 9.36 to play in the fourth quarter. KC in control, 48 to 11. Trip to the right for the Rangers. Webb looking upfield. He's going to end up being sacked on the play. The Apaches get to Webb as the line breaks down with 9.18 to play. Once again, Leslie Adindu is in there. He and a few other Apaches are in there. We see also for Tyler Junior College, Will Hatter. And so the Apaches able to get some players in there to help out and make the stop. Isaiah Coney also for Tyler. Yeah. He had a receiver open on a curl that would have gotten him his first down, but he was he was stuck on the one receiver running the long, long pass, and I thought he wanted to just do it. And so loss of four to the 41 makes it a fourth down and 18, and Christopher Baldaza will come on to kick it away to Trey Taylor, of Tyler who's standing at his own 21-yard line. There's the snap right as the play clock was about to expire, and Baldazzo gets the kick away. It's a very short kick. He was rushed, and it will roll out of bounds at the 41-yard line of TJC. So that's an 18-yard kick by Baldazzo. Again, a heavy rush. I don't think anybody got a hand on it, but I think because of the crowd around him, he just kicked it off the side of his foot. Yeah, they were coming for the block, but you're right. Nobody touched it. Um, I think there will be a little extra punting practice this week. You've not seen any of those pretty spirals that you see. They're kind of knuckleballs going up there. Well, it's been a, not the smoothest game for either of these teams. Of course, Kilgore College enjoying the big lead right now. They defeated Trinity Valley 37-17 last week. And they're just on a roll here on first down. There is the handoff. You back into the ball game for the Apaches. It's John Solitaire, a sophomore running back from San Antonio. He's able to get up in there, but Jaheim Patterson is in there and also August Salvati on the stop for Kilgore College. Yeah, Ryland Redden, number 32, a linebacker freshman from uh, White Oak, did a nice job. He filled the hole. If he had made the tackle, that would have been a fairly good game. Trips to the right on second down. Thomas will air it out, and the ball is caught by Cord, and then he's pushed out of bounds. And it is Dunn who ended up making the hit to knock Cord out of bounds. They'll put the ball at the 48-yard line, and that will now be a third down for Tyler. Patches will need three for the first down. Trips to the right, one to the left. Thomas now looks to the sideline for a signal. Ended up being a pickup five for Tyler on that last pass play. And then Thomas is going to quickly fire it for another first down to Cord, who falls out of bounds on the Kilgore side of the field at the 47 yard line. That's another pickup of five. And a first down done on the loose coverage for Kilgore College. Yeah, I think he decided to just fall on his own instead of getting pushed out of bounds. 7.07 ago, Tyler is trailing 48 to 11. The Apaches have been sticking with his game plan today. It just hasn't worked very well against Kilgore. Trips to the right now, and this is gonna be on first down. Thomas with the keeper after the fake, and he'll run out of bounds on his own accord. Clock stops every time the Apaches do that at the 44, a gain of three, second down and seven. Tyler on the Kilgore side of the field, trailing 48 to 11 with 6.50 to play. Make it 6.51, the clock stopped. Yeah, good play, good first down yardage. Triple wide receivers to the right and one to the left. Snap goes to Thomas, five step drop under a rush, rolling to his right, trying to find a man who's open. He's gonna run out of bounds on the far side of the field. He'll gain a yard to the 43 and now the Apaches with a third down and six with 6.30 to play. Yeah, with the score 48-11, but the Apaches are playing, there's no sense of urgency. They're, they're just gonna try to score. I think they realize that it might be a fuel effort, but um, they're trying, but they're not, they're not having a lot of success. So this time it will be double wide receivers to the left and to the right for Tyler Junior College. There's the snap. 
Thomas looking upfield, fires this ball deep, wide open at the 15 and walking into the end zone for the Tyler touchdown. It's Shatarius Williams, a sophomore from Demopolis, Alabama. A big breakdown in secondary coverage for the Kilgore Rangers, and Tyler makes Kilgore College pay with 6.02 to go in the third quarter. 43-yard touchdown pass from Thomas to Shatarius Williams. Yeah, that was another breakdown. Number 20, Marcus Moultrie, a freshman from Parker Heights, Texas, just let the guy go. That's a, and I, I don't have a replay, but I think that's the second time number 20 did that. They're, e they're either missing something with the safety coming over the top, or he's just uh, squatting down and the guy's running by him. This time for the point after touchdown for TJC, it's Colin Randall, and he pokes it through the uprights. The kick is good. So Tyler is able to get on the scoreboard yet again on a touchdown pass of 43 yards from Thomas to Shatarius Williams. Randall with the extra point kick, 6.02 to go in the third, make it the fourth quarter. And it's Kilgore 48, Tyler 18. Let's take a 60 second timeout on KTBB. <laughs> Six minutes, two seconds to play in the fourth quarter from the Granton Flannery broadcast booth at Ari St. John Memorial Stadium. It's 48 to 18. Kilgore College with the lead over the Tyler Junior College Apaches. The Apaches will be kicking it off. That's Colin Randall who will pop this one up in the air away from Kilgore players. Picked up on the bounce by Freeman at the 20. Freeman waited for the fair catch. And once he secured the ball, Kilgore will take it at the 25 yard line. It was a 75 yard scoring drive for the Apaches and Thomas with his second touchdown pass of the ball game connected with Shatarius Williams, his first reception of the ball game. 43 yard pass from Thomas to Williams and Randall with the extra point kick. The Apaches trailing 48 to 18. Yeah, Manny, this is one of those games where they're gonna win and they're gonna go in the locker room and, and enjoy it tonight. But I guarantee you the coaching staff is gonna be looking at these films, especially the lapses in defense in the secondary. They're not going to be able to do that against a better team. They won't get away with it. Interesting you say that, though, because one of the things that Coach said earlier in the week in his interview, which we listened to at the half, was that he thought in the first game the secondary did not play as well as he had hoped. It was the first game of the season, however. But in, he was thinking that the secondary has been better throughout the season, and they certainly have. But a couple of lapses in this third and fourth quarter. Now, granted, he might have had some substitutes into the ball game as well, but coaches will use that to motivate the team for the next game. Absolutely. Coaches always look for the coaching points. I mean, Bill Belichick's renowned for that. If he, he can win 35 to nothing, and he's still going to complain that somebody slipped and fell. Double wide out to the left, one to the right. Tyler Webb on first down will hand it off. And left side cutting up field and going out of bounds at the 35-yard line. The penalty against Kilgore College moved the ball back to the 18-yard line. And so on the carry for Kilgore, that was Caden Meredith. He's back into the ball game now, one of the leading running backs for Kilgore College. So the ball is up to the 24-yard line. And so at 5.37 to play. The Rangers have a second down and seven to go. That was an eight yard pickup by Caden. And he gets behind one of his big blockers and gets a field to the 31 yard line. And that'll be very close to a first down. And I tell you what, that was a big time block by Jadarlin Key out of Longview. Meredith got behind him. He even had his left arm on Key's shoulder and just let Key run over Apaches to get the first down. Smart kid to put your hand on the shoulder of a six foot seven, 355 pound man. Absolutely, and Jadarlin can lay the wood to you if he gets ahead of steam. 
So that ended up being the pickup of seven that the Rangers needed in a first down with 4.58 to play. Kilgore on top, 48 to 18. Double wet out to the left, one to the right for KC. There's a snap to Tyler Webb. He'll hand it off to Meredith again. Squirts through the middle, has a little bit of room, and then meets resistance at the 45-yard line. A couple of Apaches in there on the stop. One of them was for Tyler Junior College. Bowser, that is Ramon Bowser. He's a sophomore out of Tyler, Texas. And the ball is at the 46-yard line, and the Rangers with a 15-yard gain by Caden Meredith have a first down. Here comes the blitz, and Webb will end up handing it off to Meredith. A flight comes down as Webb goes down at the 41. Great pressure by the Tyler defense. Samuel Robles, a freshman defensive lineman out of Houston, in there on the stop. Yeah, number seven, Samarian Bryan, a freshman lineman from Bay City for the. Number 70 of the offense. That penalty will be declined. Second down. Yeah, he. Um, he had a blitzer cross his face, and I guess he just decided to pull him down by the jersey. And so that'll be at the 41-yard line. That's where the loss is, the 416 to play. Second down and 15, a five-yard loss there. So Kilgore College with a football, with a big lead of 30 points, 48 to 18. Game has been well in hand for a while for the Rangers. Double wide out to the left, one to the right for Kilgore. Webb will again fake it. He throws a short pass, caught at the 40 and up to the 43 yard line for the Rangers. It is Justin Dominic, a freshman tight end out of Vivian, Louisiana at 6'3", 230 pounds, got collared down at the 43 yard line. That's just a pickup of two, making it a third down and 13. Yeah, schematically good pay, play. Fake the hand off the 43 and then throw it to him. Usually that fakes the defense out. They let him go after he doesn't take the handoff. Didn't happen this time as Darian White was in there to help make the stop for Tyler Junior College with 3.22 to go. So third down and 13, the Rangers. Time winding down in this one for Mari St. John. Snap goes to Webb, looking upfield. He's going to roll to his right as he's in the grasp. He completes the pass. That one is caught by Justin Dominic. And it won't gain much, just two yards to the 45-yard line, but Dominic able to make the grab for a two-yard gain. And how about Webb with some arm strength in the grass, got the ball up field to Dominic. Now it's a fourth down and 11 for Kilgore with 2.52 to play. But when guys don't get to play a ton, the fans sure do give them a, a big round of applause when they make a play. Absolutely, and it's uh, it's always good that he looks for the tight end when he's in trouble. That's your, uh, that's your warm bottle, so to speak. So here is Baldazzo on for the punt again with 2.34 to go, Bob. And back to receive it for Tyler Junior College. It will be Jermone Bowser. So Bowser is from Tyler. Tyus Bowser is a player that people might know from Tyler High School, then John Tyler High School, University of Houston, and playing in the NFL for the Baltimore Ravens. 2.20 to go. And so the tradition for the Bowser family keeps on going. In the meantime, that kick is down at the 10-yard line. That's where Kilgore will have the football as Randall put his foot into it again for Tyler Junior College. Rather, for Kilgore College, that was Baldauza with a punt, excuse me, and Tyler has the football at the 10-yard line. Yeah, it might have been the best punt of the night, and it was a terrible snap. He had to pick it up off the ground, so maybe that's how they should snap to him from now on. That ended up being a 45-yard kick that time. Yeah. So 2.20 to go, and Tyler Junior College has the football. Josh Thomas has gone all the way at quarterback for the Apaches this afternoon. In with him in the backfield, it is John Solitaire. Double wideouts to the left and to the right for Tyler. First down, moving to the right, it is Thomas, trying to get away from defenders. Connects on the pass up field at the 25, and what a run by the Apache to get up to the 35-yard line. That is Mike Jones, a freshman wide receiver from Worth, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas. Nice job by Jones to get to the 34 and a first down. That's a 24-yard pickup. Yeah, great play. A long crosser left to right, hit the open zone. Double wide us to each side, first down. Thomas looking to his left. Here comes the rush. A diving attempt is no good, but then he is upended by Dunn. The diving attempt by Villa Lamy Wolfgram, a 285-pound man diving at your ankles. Wolfgram didn't catch up to him, but Dunn did. And that'll be a gain up to the 36-yard line. So a pickup of two, second down and eight with a minute 37 to go. 
Yeah, he had a man. I guess he decided he wanted to run instead of just throw it, but uh, he had somebody for a six, seven yard gain. 90 seconds left in the contest, and the Rangers will get sole position of first place for this week in the SWJC FC. And the run ahead by Solitaire, he ends up being tackled on the play by John Kilgore's Blaze Tita. And so with a minute 14 to play, Gain goes to the 38, a pickup of couple. Third down now for Tyler. The Apaches need six from their own 38. 65 seconds to go. Trips to the right, one to the left. Thomas takes the snap. Looking back, Salvati misses him. Thomas rolling to his left. He's gonna dump this ball upfield and that will be incomplete. With 54.4 to play, Tyler with a fourth and six from its own 38 yard line. Blaze Tita putting pressure on the quarterback also as well. We see Kawan Robinson, we've called his name a few times today, from Bryant, Arkansas, 300 pounder who's light on his feet. Yeah, Tukor's got a lot of second team players, I think, on the defense, but they're still putting a considerable amount of pressure on the quarterback, making him hurry and rush. So the Rangers, Forcing Tyler to punt it away here with 54.4 seconds to play. Colin Randall will be back to kick it away yet again. That young man has had a busy day for this Tyler football team. The Rangers will move to five and one in conference play. The kick was almost blocked. Long punt caught by Phoenix. And he didn't wait for the fair catch, but he's able to fake everybody out and he's able to come up field to the 40 yard line. He's at midfield to the 40, Phoenix to the 30, Phoenix to the 20, hasta la vista baby, touchdown Kilgore College. Michael Phoenix did not wait for the fair catch that we did not see, nor did the officials see it, but Phoenix just was nonchalant catching it at the 10 yard line, was able to fake everybody out and went up the field 90 yards for the touchdown. And so the Rangers, now there's a flag back down at the 37 yard line, so we're gonna see what the call is gonna be. I didn't see Phoenix wait for it, doesn't mean he didn't wait for it prior to when I made contact with him, but certainly, let's see what the call is gonna be. This could have been a long punt return for a touchdown by Michael Phoenix, maybe. Yeah, it was, I think that penalty is because the TJC players are yipping at their official that they thought he called fair catch and one of them, I So it ends up being a touchdown by Michael Phoenix of Kilgore College, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty with 33.9 to go. And that will be unsportsmanlike conduct against the Tyler Junior College Apaches assessed on the kickoff. So the punt by Randall was caught by Phoenix. He nonchalantly caught it. Everybody thought it was a fair catch. Phoenix didn't weigh for a fair catch. He just was nonchalant about catching it. I'm sure that he was trying to catch Tyler off guard. And he did, and turned it into a long punt return for a touchdown. Yeah, it, he seemed as surprised as everybody else. He went, well, I'll just take off if you're not going to hit me. And ball does one for the point after touchdown. Snap to Welch, ball is down, kick is on the way, and that one's through the uprights. The kick is good. 33.9 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. The Michael Phoenix punt return for the touchdown gives Kilgore a 55 to 18 lead over Tyler Junior College. We'll take a 60 second timeout on 97.5 FM KTBB. Homecoming 2023 at Ari St. John Memorial Stadium. Kilgore College with a punt return by Michael Phoenix and Baldazzo with the extra point kick officially ruled an 88 yard punt return 
by Michael Phoenix for the score. And the extra point kick makes it 55 to 18. Kilgore over Tyler. 33.9 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. So Phoenix with that 88 yard return. Once again, to recap, basically it looked like everybody was thinking it was a fair catch. Everybody was running off the field as Vasquez kicks the ball in and out of the end zone. Again, the Rangers were kicking from the 50 yard line because of the penalty against Tyler after the Phoenix return for the touchdown. And so that kick goes out of the end zone and Tyler will take over at its own 25 yard line. But Phoenix did a great job of disguising it. Again, very nonchalantly caught it at the 12 and he didn't move. And I think that's why, because there was nobody else around him, he didn't move. Tyler players started going off to the field and then as you said, Bob, Phoenix said, if you're not gonna hit me, why not just run with the ball? Absolutely. It's I don't know if it was premeditated, but it turned out to be a great play. And so that play gives Kilgore a 55 to 18 lead. I think that was the most unexpected touchdown of the ball game today. I don't even think Phoenix expected it. No, absolutely not. It's early Christmas present. So 33.9 to go. Play clock goes down to zero. And we have a whistle. Tyler was trying to get a couple of players onto the field. Tyler ends up calling a timeout here. It's Tyler's first time out of the second half with 33.9 to play. And basically, Tyler just couldn't get the players on the field that they needed to. So a timeout by Tyler. Let's take a quick one here. A 30-second timeout, a 30-second break on KTBB. And here we are, 33.9 to play in the quarter, the fourth quarter. First down, John Solitaire will try to move the ball up field left side. He gets to the 30 yard line, picks up five, tackled by Dunn, second down and five. So a nice stop by Damian Dunn of Kilgore College. So we have 17 seconds left to go and this should be the last play of the ball game. And Kilgore and Tyler will start retreating to the sidelines. And this will be a victory for the Rangers, although Tyler looks like it wants to run one more play with six seconds to go. Trips to the right, one to the left. And so one more play here for Tyler. And this is going to be a handoff to Solitaire, moving right side as time expires. And he gets up being tackled from behind by Jamari Seals. And that will end up being the ball game. Final score from Mari St. John Memorial Stadium in Kilgore. The Kilgore College Rangers 55 and the Tyler Junior College Apaches 18. So Kilgore College wins this 131st meeting of the two football teams. Kilgore now has a 67 to 62 edge with two ties over Tyler Junior College in the long history of the rivalry. Kilgore moves to six and one overall, five and one in Southwest Junior College football conference action. Tyler is now five and three overall and four and two in the conference. And for the moment, the Rangers are in first place by themselves in the league. Once again, our final score, Kilgore 55, Tyler 18. Let's take this time out as we head to our Ranger football post game report. You're listening to Kilgore College Football on 97.5 FM and 600 AM KTBB.
and welcome to our Ranger Football Post Game Report on 97.5 FM and 600 AM. KTBB, Manny Almanza with you along with Bob Brewer. John Hester has been operating our camera for our Kilgore College live stream on the KC YouTube channel. And Ethan Lodato has been our engineer back at our KTBB studios. So the final score tonight as the Rangers celebrate on homecoming day, Kilgore College 55, Tyler Junior College 18. Let's take a look at our second half scoring summary for today's ball game. At the intermission, Kilgore College had a 21 to five lead over the Tyler Junior College Apaches. The Rangers in that first half had three touchdown passes from Cameron Peters. Two of them went to Chris Marshall and a 58 yarder to Zeke Freeman. In the third quarter, the Rangers had a 20 to six advantage over Tyler. And here are the third quarter scoring. Williams caught a 20 yard touchdown pass from Peters and their point kick was good by Baldazzo at 12-15 of the third quarter. It finished off a 78 yard drive and Dominique Williams who got the start at tailback with a 20 yard pass from Cameron Peters and Kilgore College extended its lead at that time to 28 to five. Kilgore College ended up getting the ball back and with 547 left in the third quarter off a 56 yard drive, Kilgore College scored again as Peters completed a nine yard touchdown pass to Michael Phoenix. However, the extra point kick was no good by Baldazzo. 547 left in the third quarter, but Kilgore College extended its lead to 34 to five over Tyler. And then the Rangers just kept going as with a minute 47 to go in the third quarter to finish off a 65 yard drive after a TJC punt. It just took one play. One play, 65 yards, Trey Epps, the Kilgore High School product, scampered to the end zone around left side for the score. Christopher Baldazzo with the extra point kick at 147 of the third quarter. And the Rangers at that time just kept it rolling. 41 to five over Tyler Junior College. However, Tyler got on the scoreboard again late in the third quarter with 21.3 seconds to play in the third quarter. It was an 89 yard drive, so Tyler, after the kickoff, ended up with a penalty and had the ball move back half the distance to the goal from the 22 to the 11. And then, with 21.3 to go in the third quarter, they finally connected Josh Thomas to Trey Taylor. It was an 81-yard touchdown pass down the left sideline. The extra point kick, however, was blocked at 21.3 of the third quarter. And Tyler Junior College finally getting a touchdown, but well behind in the contest then by a score of 41 to 11. In the fourth quarter, Kilgore College able to get the ball back and scoring pretty quickly. It was a 65 yard drive for the Rangers. They lost two on first down, a first down run by the quarterback Tyler Webb at the end of the third quarter of play. And then in the fourth quarter, the first play of the fourth quarter on second down and 12, Webb throws a 67 yard touchdown pass to Polk. And so a nice grab by Melvin Polk who earlier in the ball game had a 54 yard kickoff return to set up Kilgore in scoring position back in the first half. But Polk with a 67 yard reception from Tyler Webb. Extra point kick was good by Baldazzo at 1448 of the fourth quarter. And the Rangers go up by a score of 48 to 11. Tyler Junior College gets a touchdown at 602 of the fourth quarter capping off a 75 yard drive as Thomas had his second touchdown pass of the ball game. It was a 43 yard pass this time to Shotarius Williams. Thomas to Williams for a 43 yard pass. The extra point kick was good by Colin Randall who came in this time at 602 of the fourth quarter. And Tyler Junior College made the score 48 to 18. And then the final score of the ball game for Kilgore College was very unsuspecting. Nobody expected it, 33.9 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. A punt that was caught by Michael Phoenix at the 12 yard line. Phoenix relaxed, nobody came after him and so our thought was, did he wait for a fair catch? The referees did not see it, nor did they blow the whistle. Tyler Junior College players thought it was a fair catch, but ended up being Phoenix. Nobody was coming after him. He didn't hear a whistle. He ran up the field. 88 yard punt return for the touchdown. Baldazzo with the extra point kick at 33.9 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. And that was the final score of the ball game. Kilgore College 55 and Tyler Junior College 18. Kilgore outscored Tyler 14 to seven in the fourth quarter. 34 to 13 overall in the second half of play. And so Bob, the Rangers totally 
dominant defensively. Tyler had opportunities to make plays, did make some plays, especially the last two passes that Tyler had, but by then it was too little too late. Absolutely, like we talked about, the, the Tyler defense just imposed themselves. Um, anytime you win a game, it's good, but as we talked, Coach Goodwin will have a lot of tape that he can work on and get his players still focused next week to improve, but um, it was an impressive win. I mean, if you look at the statistics, they just beat a 5-2 and two team, so good for them. Good game. Kilgore College ranked third in the nation. Tyler Junior College ranked 11th, and the Rangers get the better of the Apaches today, 55-18. to 18. That's a look at our second-half scoring summary for today's ball game. Let's go ahead and take this time out. We'll come back with more of our Ranger football postgame show as the Rangers come up with a 55-18 to 18 victory over Tyler Junior College. We'll be back after this break on 97.5 FM KTBB. Thank you. Thank you. And we welcome you back to our Kilgore College broadcast of Ranger football and the Ranger football posting report as the Kilgore College Rangers have defeated Tyler Junior College by a final score of 55 to 18. Let's go ahead and take a look at our final stats for today's ball game. Our stats provided by Phil Hicks of the Tyler Morning Telegraph, and we thank Phil so much for his statistics. Individual stats first, rushing wise for Tyler Junior College leading the way. It was, and he played mostly in the first half of the ball game for Tyler Junior College. The young man from Gilmer, Ashton Haynes. Haynes ended up with a total of five carries for 28 yards in the contest. Five carries, 28 yards for Haynes of TJC. And then next in line, yardage wise, with just nine yards on seven carries, it was Logan Johnson. 
the man on the punting team, Ziggy Lowe, with a fake punt, one carry for eight yards. And then toward the end of the game, John Solitaire got in for Tyler, had four carries for eight yards. Also, one carry for five yards for Laverian Logan. And then for the quarterback, Thomas, 18 rushes, zero yards. Just didn't have any luck running the ball today. And then the team lost 20 yards in total. And so, again, for Tyler Junior College, that's where they were at individual rushing-wise. For Kilgore College, individually rushing, Trey Epps with two carries for 68 yards, including his 65-yard touchdown run. Caden Meredith had 15 carries for 53 yards in his return from injury. The quarterback, Cameron Peters, four carries for 19 yards. Maddox had four carries for 10 yards for the Kilgore College Rangers. And that was Gary Maddox with four carries for 10 yards for KC. And then also, next in line for Kilgore College, Dominique Williams, the starting tailback today, had eight carries for just six yards. Zeke Freeman, one carry for six yards. And then Tyler Webb, who came in in relief of Peters, two carries for minus three yards. Passing-wise for the Apaches, Josh Thomas, 17 completions, 29 attempts, no interceptions, 259 yards. For the Rangers, Cameron Peters was 10 of 12 with no interceptions, 191 yards. And then Tyler Webb, 5 of 6 with no interceptions for 68 yards. Tyler Webb had one touchdown pass for Kilgore College. Peters ended up with five touchdown passes in the ball game today. So Cameron Peters, who had a bunch of touchdowns against Tyler Junior College in game one, has five touchdown passes in the ball game in game two. And then again, receiving wise for Tyler, Trey Taylor led the way five receptions, 122 yards for Trey Taylor. Leading receiver for the Kilgore College Rangers was Zeke Freeman. He had three catches for 99 yards and the touchdown. But also you want to mention Marshall. He had three catches for 64 yards and two touchdowns. Polk one for 67 and the one touchdown. And then Phoenix three for 22. He also had a touchdown. Taylor did have that one touchdown reception for Tyler Junior College. And then also Williams, Shotarius Williams, one reception for 43 yards. And that was a touchdown as well for TJC. That's a look at individual stats. Team stats now for the Kilgore College Rangers. 22 first downs to Tyler's 15. The Rangers had 36 carries for 157 yards rushing. Tyler, 37 carries, 38 yards rushing. Passing yards for the Rangers, 259 in total. Also 259 for Tyler Junior College. The Rangers had 416 yards of total offense to Tyler's 297. Baldazzo with three punts, a 35.7 yard average for Kilgore, and nine punts, 39.3 yards for Colin Randall. Two fumbles for Tyler. They lost one. The Rangers did not put the ball on the turf offensively. Tyler, 10 penalties, 134 yards. Kilgore, eight penalties for 75 yards. And I think penalties probably played a part in this game. Absolutely, absolutely. <coughs> not a lot of turnovers, which was good. But, yeah, they've got to clean up the penalties. You can't, you can't compete against higher level of competition with, with that many penalties. Tyler again with 10 penalties, and that hurt them in key situations. You now the Rangers with eight penalties, two less. But, you know, Coach Good is not going to be happy about those penalties as well. And that's a look at our stats. Again, thanks to Phil Hicks who gave us those statistics from the Tyler Morning Telegraph. Let's take one more break on 97.5 FM. We'll come back and wrap it up from here in Kilgore as the Rangers defeat the Apaches 55-18. to
And welcome back to the final segment of our Ranger Football Coast Game Report on 97.5 FM and also on KTBB.com and the KTBB mobile app. And again, we want to thank those of you who are sticking with us viewing on our Kilgore College YouTube channel. Final score, Kilgore College 55 and Tyler Junior College 18. There were, of course, other games going on in the Southwest Junior College Football Conference for today. Now, we only have one score that we can give you, and we'll give you that in just a second. But on this Saturday, October the 28th, other games included Blinn College at Northeastern Oklahoma A&M. It was Cisco College facing Navarro College in Corsicana and Trinity Valley in New Mexico playing in the Wool Bowl against New Mexico Military Institute. We do have a final score from that game. Trinity Valley Community College 39, New Mexico Military Institute 33. That's TVCC 39 and NMMI 33. So we can go ahead and take a look at a version of updated standings for Southwest Junior College Football Conference. Kilgore College in first place by themselves. The Rangers are now 5-1 overall. Rather, excuse me, 5-1 in conference action, 6-1 overall. Kilgore 5-1 in conference, 6-1 overall. Next in line, it is Tyler Junior College and Trinity Valley Community College. Both of those teams are now 4-2 in conference play. Overall, Tyler is 5-3. TVCC is 6-2. Navarro College is currently 3-2 in conference play and 3-3 three and three overall. New Mexico Military with a loss falls to 4-3 in the league and 5-4 and four on the season. And that will be NMMI's last conference game of the year at 4-3. And, and then also we see Cisco College right now with a 3-3 three and three record in the league and 4-3 and three overall. Blinn College at 0-5 and 2-5. And also, Northeastern Oklahoma, 0-5 in the conference, 0-7 overall. So those are the updated standings as we have them. But Kilgore all alone in first place at 5-1. Next week in the conference, it is on November the 4th, Northeastern Oklahoma A&M against Trinity Valley Community College. That's TVCC's homecoming and Hall of Fame game. That's at noon in Athens. Navarro College is at Tyler Junior College at 3 at Christus Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium. New Mexico Military Institute had a game scheduled against Gordon's Fine Arts and Sports Academy in the World Bowl in Roswell. However, that's the team, Gordon Prep, that canceled on Kilgore College back on October the 7th. So I don't know if that game is going to take place, to be honest with you. And then we see as well on the schedule, Kilgore College in its final regular season game, taking on Blinn College at Cubs Stadium in Brenham. That game is a 3 o'clock kickoff in Brenham. We will bring you on our Kilgore College Sports Network Facebook page as well as KCRangerNation.com on Twitter and as well as on our Kilgore College Athletics website at KCRangerNation.com. We will bring you an updated broadcast schedule for that particular game and where the broadcast will come from video-wise and if we're able to make it, audio-wise as well. But stay tuned to Facebook, Twitter, and our website for that broadcast of next week's game between Kilgore and Blinn. So that's a look at what's coming ahead in the conference. Any final thoughts, Bob, about this game today? Well, like we talked about previously, I think it's a, a perfect game. They won big, did a lot of good things, but there was enough negative things that uh, Coach Gooden will have a, a good week of instruction and can kind of bark at his players a little bit and uh, get them fired up for the next week's game. So all in all, success. They won, but they can work on some things. And again, Bob, I want to thank you so much for being with us for the first time for our broadcast. I appreciate your insights and knowledge about the game. And we hope to have you on again in the broadcast in the future. It's my pleasure, Manny. I had a blast. I hope the viewers were okay putting up with my scratchy voice and coughing. I think they were just fine. And remember, you said this earlier, we have faces for radio, so it worked <laughs> out okay. <laughs> well, I do for sure. Also, we want to thank John Hester, who's our camera operator for our broadcast on the Kilgore College Sports Network. Thanks as well to Chris Craddock for running the scoreboard on the YouTube channel. Also to Reagan Silvey for his technical support. I want to thank Ethan Lodato, our engineer back at our KTBB studios. Most of all, we want to thank you today, whether you're viewing on YouTube, whether you're listening here on the radio on KTBB in East Texas or at ktbb.com or the app. Thanks for joining us today. Once again, our final score from Mari St. John Memorial Stadium on homecoming day. It was the Kilgore College Rangers 55, the Tyler Junior College Apaches 18. For all of us at the KC Sports Network and KTBB, this is Manny Almanza saying so long 
from RE St. John Memorial Stadium.